How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the third day of 12 Days of Pugs. Today, we have the cringiest and strangest emo kids of all time. These stories of, of, are of emo kids who hate the world, society hates them, and uh, yeah, these are probably some of the funniest stories on the channel, so sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and uh, yeah, definitely get comfortable for this one, because this is a long one, as these all are, and uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it. How's it going, everyone? Today we got a story time of an emo kid who believes that he is an actual gangster, quote-unquote, and that he has shooters and that you should watch out for him, bro. He is actually super hard. He is like, you don't want to mess with the emo kid, man. So, yeah, the subscriber messes with the emo kid, and he feels the wrath of the emo kid, which uh, I don't know if you guys can't figure out from uh, the sarcasm in my voice, at least in the beginning part, that the wrath of the emo kid is, uh, it's pretty bearable, to say the least. This is a pretty funny story. I know you'll enjoy it, so sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's get right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted today's story, Tyler. So anyways, in Tyler's class, there's a kid, and we're going to call this kid the emo kid. So I don't know if you guys had, like, the emo kid in your school, but basically, the emo kid in Tyler's school was very much the stereotypical emo kid. And let me just say, you can dress however you want. You can even dress a little emo if you want. Like, it really doesn't matter. As long as you aren't going around saying, of going up to people being like, I got shooters, bro, watch out, don't mess with emo squad, gang gang, and then start biting people then you're okay in my books, which I feel like it's pretty easy to... Dude, I, I, I've been saying this stuff, but, like, I feel like it's it's pretty easy to be good in my books, bro. That's all I'm trying to say. It's pretty good to be... It's pretty easy to be good in my books. But anyways, right, so there's an emo kid in Tyler's class. So anyways, right, the emo kid, uh, what he would do is in the class, he'd normally sit in the very back of class, and he would make, like, random remarks and references to how society is against him and how like i don't know think about like the emo kids from south park basically just that i think they're the goth kids in south park but anyways right just like randomly in class you'd be like ah, it's so tough that we live in a society hmm. like i am so smart and intelligent that's why i can't be happy look guys if you want a good quote look at naval Ravikant saying if you're so smart why can't you make yourself happy he has a really good book on that he has good talks anyways i'm getting distracted anyways he'd be like hmm we live in a society isn't uh, aren't i so intelligent guys and he'd like look around at everyone and like tyler and everyone else would be like uh okay bro like okay other days he would come in and have like music on full blast but he has headphones on but I don't know if you know those people that like they put their headphones on but they just turn up the music so loud that you can hear it very faintly. If that's true about you, you got to turn your music down unless you don't want to hear when you're 28, right? Like you got to turn that down a little bit. But dude, I swear like people will come in and it's like they have no idea because you know, you got headphones in. When you got headphones in, you think that no one else can hear what you're listening to, but they can hear it if it's way too loud, bro. So I'm just, so the emo kid would come in and he would just have like screamer punk rock in his ears or whatever. And he'd just be like jamming out in the back of class. So he'd be in the way, way back of the classroom. So the teacher wouldn't really notice any of this. But like if you're sitting in the back of the classroom, you'd probably be like, ah, uh, emo kid, can you turn it down, bro? Like, please. And he'd just be so busy jamming out and talking about how society is bad or whatever. However, one day, Tyler was able to, uh, was had his first one-on-one -on -one interaction with the emo kid. It was probably one of the worst one-on-one -on -one interactions you could ever have. Yeah, so anyways, uh, one day, Tyler is walking to class. Gets to class, sits down, it's a normal day in class. So this time, you know, the bell rings and he gets up. So normally, the emo kid, right, is in like, he sits in the back of the class, so he's normally one of the last people out. But today, Tyler has to, like, do something really quickly. Maybe he, he just wants to send an email that he knows he's going to forget to send if he doesn't send it right away. Like, he, it's one of those things where if you, like, put it off and then you just, like, say, oh, I'll do that later, you know you'll forget to do it later. So, something like that. For some reason, Tyler was just sticking behind class a little bit. So, when Tyler got up, he started walking. But the emo kid was, like, walking as, like, so Tyler was getting up from his desk, and the emo kid was walking with his, like, screamer metal in his ears. And he's, like, his head's down, he's looking at his phone, trying to find the next, like, Society Sucks song that he can find. 
And sure enough, Tyler accidentally bumps into him as he gets up. So anyways, Tyler looks up and is like, my fault, bro. Kind of just saying sorry because he's like, hey, I bumped into him. Like, that's on me. But the emo kid, like, stops in his tracks. Like, straight up stops in his tracks. Like, takes out his phone, pauses his emo screamer music, takes off his headphones, and is like, you got a problem, bro? And, like, Tyler's like, nah, my fault. I just didn't see you coming. And Tyler goes down to, like, move or whatever, and the emo kid stretches out his arm to stop Tyler from moving. Look, this is obviously not a big deal. Like, this is so very clearly just, like, not that deep. However, there are some people out there that will make everything. Even They're just looking for a reason to be mad at people, right? They're just looking for a reason to be upset. And the emo kid was one of those people. Because the emo kid is like, bro, you don't understand, bro. You don't know where I come from and my, my, my gang. And he, Tyler's like, okay. He's like, it's the emo gang. We are the wolf clan. And like, Tyler's like, don't laugh. No, don't laugh. Don't laugh. No, 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 no. And the emo kid's like, bro, you don't understand what you're doing right now, bro. You don't, you don't even understand. My, my, my gang, my squad, wolf, wolf, wolf clan is like <sighs> so crazy, bro. Like you don't understand. And like Tyler's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. If I laugh, it's going to piss this kid off more. Here's the thing. Tyler wasn't really that worried about <laughs> wolf clan or the emo gang or whatever, right? He kind of understood that, yeah, it's not, like, okay, it's probably just some, like, kids playing Dungeon and Dragons, and they're gonna, like, put a spell on him or something. So he's not too worried about that, but at the same time, he also doesn't want this kid to be super freaking annoying, because he's not worried about his, like, safety, he's worried about his mental safety from this a barrage of annoyance, bro. That's what he's worried about, being just annoyed again and again by this emo kid. So, yeah, sure enough, um, he's like, all right, bro, like, it was a mistake. I didn't mean to bump into you. I'm sorry. Look, guys, sometimes you just got to, like, say I'm sorry, even if, like, you're not even totally in the wrong. In situations where you just want to de-escalate and get out of there, it really doesn't matter who is actually in the wrong. If you just say I'm sorry, a lot of times you can actually de-escalate situations. A lot of time, bro, these people are not worth your time. Just a little word of advice. You can choose to take it or not. But this emo kid was like, bro, you don't understand who you just messed with, bro. He's like, you'll be hearing from the gang, bro. I got shooters, bro. <laughs> it's just like the cringiest thing you've ever heard. This kid obviously just watched like one TikTok video where someone was using like all this slang vocabulary, right? And he's like, oh my God, guys, that's literally me. He's like trying to apply it to his like the emo kid squad. It's just, it's just, it just is something else, bro. That's all I'm trying to say. So sure enough, right, Tyler's like, oh, crap. Like, I got to deal with this kid now. Like, I really got to deal with this kid and his actual nonsense. And so, yeah, sure enough, Tyler's like, okay, whatever, bro, fine. Um, so he's like, all right, sorry, man. I'll see you tomorrow. And the emo kid's like, oh, uh, yeah, you'll see me and emo. You, you'll see me. You'll see me and Wolfgang, bro, like Wolf Clan. You don't understand what you've done. Oh. <laughs> something like just oh my god tyler's like oh god if i laugh at this kids can piss him off more and this is going to make my life even more just even worse than it is it's going to be after this kid is like done with his nonsense so tyler was kind of hoping that this kid was more or less bluffing and he what he was just going to like forget about this and just like this wasn't going to become a thing you know what i mean anyways right so tyler comes back the next day and unfortunately uh, so at like kind of like their their free period recess type thing. I don't really know how to say it I don't really know how to put it right. So during their kind of free block or whatever uh, So Tyler what he does is he just kind of like he chills in this area with some of his friends uh, So I, I don't know Let's just say it's a certain classroom that they have access to maybe no one's in it and no one's ever in it during that period But he has it free so Tyler sitting with his friends or whatever, they're just kind of hanging out. And that's when the emo kid and two other similarly dressed emo looking type people walk in. And the emo kid is like, it's like, Tyler, I already told you that you disrespected Wolfgang, Wolf Clan, and you have to understand this is Wolf Clan's uh, turf, bro. You don't understand. You don't want to battle with Wolf Clan, bro. Like I'm just saying. Like look at us. And, he, and Tyler looks at them and he's like, I- I'm not intimidated, dude. I don't know how else to put it. I'm just not intimidated by this, bro. Anyways, right. So the emo group is up versus Tyler and his friends. 
and the emo group is trying to explain in the most menacing way that they possibly can to Tyler and his friends that, you know, they are messing with, uh, you know, wolf pack whatever, that the emo gang is actually not to be messed with, and that they're making a huge mistake, like, doing this on their turf. And, like, Tyler and his friends, Tyler kind of motions to his friends to kind of, like, not laugh, because, like, look, at the end of the day, Tyler isn't trying to start anything with anyone, it just wouldn't be worth his time, you feel me? Like, it just would not be worth his time to have a whole, like, thing with these emo kids, right? So anyways, Tyler kind of responds, look, guys, uh, well, I mean, there's 10 minutes left in the free period. Can we just, like, finish up here, and then you can have it afterwards? Emo kid's like, you don't understand. You disrespected me yesterday, and that is not gonna stand. Right, emos? And he, like, turns around, and, like, the other two are, like, I don't know, whipping their hair around and, like, sulking in the corner. He's like, yeah, you you, you hear you hear me, bro? You, you, you hear me? Obviously, Tyler's just like, oh, my God. So he looks at his friends. He's kind of like, uh, maybe we should go. Because at this point, it's kind of like, they can stay there, hold their ground, and just basically have to deal with this kid being annoying for the next 10 minutes, or they go somewhere else and they can chill and relax for the next, like, eight minutes, because it'll probably take, like, at least two minutes to go find a new place. However, though, while the second one might sound more appealing off the bat, because you don't have to deal with their nonsense for another 10 minutes, at the, uh, we, we, we can't forget that at the end of the day, if you kind of give in to someone, then they might just continue to do it. Like, if they, like, give in to the emo kids right now, there's a good chance that if they try and do something else or try and, like, be somewhere else with the emo kids next free period, because apparently they have overlap, they're going to do the same stuff. Like, they're going to come and they're going to try and bully them out of there because at the end of the day, like, if you let someone do something to you, they're probably going to keep doing it. It's like they're going to keep pushing the boundaries. So if you keep letting them, they're going to keep pushing the boundaries. Like, why would you expect that they won't do something after you let someone do it once? So Tyler's a little bit conflicted, but his friend's like, no, we're not going anywhere. You can have this spot in 10 minutes, but we got here, like, first. And also, like, you guys can be here, too. It's an open classroom. And, like, Tyler's friend had a point. They weren't in, like, a broom closet. <laughs> like, there was room for multiple people to be in the classroom. It's not like Tyler and his friends reserved the entire classroom. It's not like that's even a thing you could do. And there's plenty of room for the emo kids if they really wanted to. But obviously the emo kids were not really that interested in the spot. Honestly, I don't even think that they really cared about being in this classroom. They just cared more, or I should say the main emo kid. I think the other two were just going along with like what the main guy said. The other, all the, the main guy basically just wanted to get like back at Tyler. He wanted to kind of like flex his muscle, quote unquote, to show Tyler that he shouldn't have messed with the emo squad in the first place. And this will be like, he'll never forget this lesson for the rest of his life. Hmm. Yeah, so, um... Tyler's like, yeah, like, actually, that's a good point. I mean, if you guys want to be here, too, that's whatever, but we're not going to move. So at this point, the emo squads, or the emo guy, or the emo kid is like, you don't understand who you're messing with right now, bro. Like, uh, you don't even know right now. So he gets up and he likes like, all right, boys, let's get out of here. And they all walk out of there. So Tyler turns to his friends. And he kind of, like, explained a little bit, like, to them. Like, he got on, like, call or something, Discord call. When he got back home, he's like, bro, I had the weirdest interaction with that kid in class today. And he told them about it. But his friends didn't realize to what extent it was a weird interaction. And this is, like, kind of, like, their visual proof. Yeah, so, uh... Tyler's friends were kind of like, bro, like, I feel bad for you, dude. Like, the fact you have to deal with this is kind of funny. Uh, real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment emo down below. So go in the comment section and comment emo. And if you're listening on Spotify, I think there's a comment section too. But anyways, while you're in the comment section on YouTube, if you go to the pinned comment, there's two links. The first one is a link to Spotify, which I'm trying to really build up on there. I got some like, I, I you know, I'm starting to build good relationships with people at Spotify. So I would appreciate it if you guys do use it to go over there and listen to me on there. It would be very nice. And the second thing is actually later today, I think, or maybe tomorrow, but I think later today, I will be dropping uh, my first uh, storytime animation on my new storytime animated channel. It's called Harvey. It is the link in the description that isn't the Spotify one. Please subscribe to the channel with notifications on. I will be posting no more than once a week because, dang, this has taken a while, but it's it's really, like, artistically fulfilling. Um, I feel like I'm putting out something a little bit more value. This stuff is great. I love doing the daily stories on here, but I feel like I'm putting something more more out on that channel. So I would really appreciate if you could go support that video. 
I'll also notify you guys later today when it goes up. Anyways, let's get back to the story. So anyways, Tyler's kind of hoping that this whole emo kid versus him turf battle basically is going to die down because he's like, this might be the dumbest thing I've ever had to deal with in my life. So please tell me that this is going to kind of like relax pretty soon, if you know what I mean. But it kind of didn't. Like, for the next, like, week, like, it, it wasn't every single day that the kids would co- that the emo kids would come and do the exact same thing. But, for example, one day, Tyler was walking the hallway, and the emo kid, like, ran up behind him and was like, Rawr! and he's like, what the frick, bro? And he turns around, and, the, <laughs> I mean, look, it wasn't, like, scary. Like, he wasn't scared. He didn't, like, pee his pants, bro. But, like, look. I don't know about you, but I'm just genuinely not going to expect some kid to run up to me out of the blue and scream rawr in my face, like, when I'm not seeing it coming, right? That's not on my my list of this is what I expect to see, you know what I mean? Yeah, so just, like, weird little things like that would happen, but the real climax of the story, when things get really strange, you might be thinking, Connor, did you just say when things get really strange, are they not strange already? Yes, they are not strange already, because, uh, the final, final event is back, back where things all started, in that class. So it's been pretty, it's been pretty tense for the last week, or not tense, okay, that, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. But Tyler is, at, at a minimum, not having a great time in class. He goes into class, and the emo kid is always staring him down, and sometimes in class, he'll feel like little pelts of, like, balled up paper being thrown at him and he's like really just holding his tongue at this point he's like dude just don't blow up on this kid i know he's annoying but it's gonna be super not worth it to like get super mad at this kid and maybe get in trouble or whatever or just to instigate him more because tyler was under the false notion that things were actually slowing down because the emo kid was like i don't know showing up less doing less stupid stuff so tyler was under the false assumption that oh well actually maybe things are kind of relaxing a little bit yeah, so, uh, anyways, though, uh, this, this was kind of, like, not, this kind of proof that things did not relax, um, they, they will after this point, but, anyways, it felt like a normal day in class, it always feels like a normal day when things go crazy in these stories, but it seemed like a normal day in class, so Tyler gets in there, and, uh, you know, he just kind of sits where he normally sits, this is not the most interesting class, so Tyler kind of, you know, the thing is, uh, the teacher lets him go on his computer, or lets everyone go on their computer, which, Look, I'm in college, and I, I, you know, every class basically lets you go on your computer. Because sometimes it's, like, important for you to do stuff on there. But let's be real. Most kids on their computer, including me sometimes. <laughs> Mom, if you're watching this, no, not me. But if everyone else watching this, yeah, me all the time. You go on there, and you probably are doing something else. Just being straight up, this is how it is. So, uh, yeah, Tyler um, is kind of, like, expecting just to kind of, like, to chill. Kind of the vibe, whatever. And uh, that's when he feels, like breathing on the back of his neck. So he turns around, he's like, hey, yo, what? Turns around, looks the emo kid. <sighs> hey, Tyler. <sighs> and Tyler's like, ah, oh, hell no, nah, bro. <laughs> no, no. Oh, my God. Because this is this has never happened before. Because this is in the middle of class right now. The kid gets up from way back in the class and gets up to stand right behind him. And it's just like heavily breathing in the back of his neck. Tyler's afraid he's going to get some emo disease that's going to go to his brain and turn him into a goth kid, bro. He's mad concerned. Anyways, so yeah. Um, Tyler's just like, oh, geez, what's this kid going to do now? Like, I'm actually genuinely kind of concerned. I just don't want to deal with whatever this kid's going to pull. So the kid's like, hey, Tyler, I just want to let you know that it was a huge mistake for you to uh, mess with the emo squad. Uh, I guess this kid was out of breath from standing up, which uh, I guess figures. I don't really know. Um, and Tyler, like, is like, dude, like, we're in class. Can you, can you please go sit down? Because, like, uh, no one's talking in class. Like, this is not one of those classes where the teacher's completely lost control. Sure, a lot of kids aren't paying attention, but there's a huge difference between kids not paying attention and kids, like, being super disruptive, right? This is not a disruptive class. So Tyler, who's not trying to get in trouble because this teacher, while he's kind of chill, is also known for not really being, like, super nice or, like, at least calling kids out when they're talking in class, which, like, fair enough, bro. You're not supposed to be talking in class. Like, I guess I get that. And the emo kid's like, Dude, like, you can't just, like, get rid of... You just can't get rid of me that easily, bro. It's, it's not that easy, dude. And, and Charlie... It's Charlie, sorry. Um, what's his name? Tyler's like, oh, my God. 
Yeah, but uh, Tyler's like, okay, bro, can you please go? And Emo Kid's like, uh, yes, but I'm just going to be charging up my next Emo attack. <laughs> and uh, Tyler's like, okay. The thing is, Tyler like didn't realize what this kid was saying. Tyler didn't realize when he said, I'm charging up my next emo attack, that he was actually going to be freaking attacked, bro. Tyler didn't put two and two together. The only thing Tyler heard was, I'm not going to be here right now. I'm going to go back to where I'm sitting. So, of course, Tyler's happy about that. He's like, right. All right, now. This kid's out of here. You simply love to see it. But no. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's just not like that, man. Um, so, sure enough, uh, the emo kid goes back to his seat. Tyler goes back to doing what he's doing. Tyler legitimately, legitimately completely forgets about the emo kid again. Goes back into his own little bubble. It's a Friday, man. Vibes are good. He's almost out of school. About to go back to the weekend, hop on with the boys, right? Things are looking real good. And that's when he feels this hot, like, sharp pain in his leg. Yeah, so Tyler looks down. Because when you feel a, heart, a hot, sharp pain in your leg, you're going to look down and make sure that someone didn't just impale you with, like, a knife or something. But no. He looks down, and all he sees is the long black hair of the emo kid. And then he looks closer. The emo kid has bitten his leg. And he's like, what the f- Like, okay, saying words I can't say on YouTube, because, you know, YouTube's actually getting real mad at you if you say bad words. But he screams that out. The teacher looks up. He's like, Tyler! language in the middle of screaming at tyler he looks down and sees why tyler said like the swear word and he looks down to see the emo kid just chomping away at his leg he's like emo kid it says his actual name but he's like emo kid what are you doing right now and like the teacher literally runs from the front of the classroom to where tyler's sitting and like he yanks the emo kid off. was trying to yank the emo kid off but he's like a dog like chewing on a chew toy like he's not letting go he's holding on to tyler's leg just by his teeth and tyler's like dude get off of me he's like trying to like kick him off or whatever eventually the emo kid's like uh, and like falls off of him and like the the, the teacher's like what is wrong with you and the emo kid's like tyler messed with the emo kid squad he messed with, he's on our turf. He's like, stop. And, Ty, and the emo kid's like, I, I, I told him I got shooters and the shooters are me. And so I, I went up after him. And the teacher's like, what are you saying right now? What are you saying? Yeah, so emo kid is taken to the front office. Um, the teacher says, yo, Tyler, can you just go to the nurse's office to get you checked up? Thankfully, emo kid didn't break the skin. He was biting on real hard, though. Like, it was really close call. Like, Tyler's leg was still a little messed up, and he was, like, hurting for a little bit. But the nurse is like, all right, well, he didn't break into the skin, which is good. Uh, we're still going to put some, like, you know, disinfectant wipes or whatever. But, uh, yeah, uh, after that point, though, the emo kid did not really mess with Tyler because apparently he got in a ton of trouble. And he was also told, if Tyler says you do anything else to him, you're screwed. Tyler doesn't know that for a fact, but just the way that the emo kid, like, avoided him, not only did the emo kid stop messing with him, but he straight up avoided Tyler. So Tyler can only assume that he was told he was on extremely thin ice, and emo kid wasn't taking any chances. If you want to support the channel, watch one of the two videos on screen right now. It really does help, and peace. How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a great day because today I have probably the craziest emo kid story I have ever received to date. I'm not even kidding. So sit back, relax, grab something to eat, grab something to drink, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and let's just jump right into it. We're calling today's subscriber Ty. So anyways, Ty was going off to camp, and this was his first time doing an overnight camp, so he was a little bit nervous, and it was kind of like a wilderness-based overnight camp, uh, but they were mostly in cabins. Ty's parents did it before, and they actually met at this camp, so they were really pushing for Ty to go, but the summer before, he just said that he, you know, wasn't ready and was going to do it the next year, and of course, the, the next summer rolls around, and Ty's like, oh my god, I said that? So sure enough, Ty and his parents ship him off to this camp. Ty's a little bit nervous about it, but they say, hey man, it's going to be good for you. Trust me. Like, I know it's scary, but you just got to do it. So anyways, they arrive at the campground and they go, they walk over, Ty and his parents walk over to the person who is signing everyone in. And it's some like, you know, some 25 year old dude with a big old goofy smile on his face. He's like, hey guys, welcome to Camp Awesome. That wasn't actually the name, but we're going to call it Camp Awesome. Uh, hi there, buddy. What's your name? He's like, uh, uh, Ty Gooden. And he's like, ah, Ty, let me see. Ah, there you are, buddy. All right, so you're going to be in group B over there. And he points to this group of kids and, like, one counselor or whatever. And 
Ty turns around to his parents and his parents are like, all right, well, we'll see you in two weeks. And Ty's like, mom, like, I don't know if I can do this. And Ty and his dad, his dad kind of sits down and he's like, yo, you got this, buddy. Like, you don't need to worry about it. Like, trust me, the two weeks are going to fly by and you're going to have so much fun, you're not going to want to leave. That's a guarantee from me. And Ty's like, all right. So Ty walks over and he goes over to group B and there's a big group of kids. And, you know, the counselor's like, hey, guys, my name is Ben. Uh, don't worry, he's not the evil guy. But hi, guys, my name is Ben. Welcome, like, to the camp. These are going to be the guys who are in our group. We're going to be in the same cabin together. We're going to do a lot of activity activities together. You can still meet people in the other groups, but these are going to be the guys you're going to be seeing all the freaking time. So start getting to know each other. Let's go around, do some names. And so they went around and did some names. And Ty was just kind of like observing like, all right, well, that person seems kind of cool and whatever. Like, oh, we have that in common. And then it kind of comes around to this one kid that Ty didn't even realize was there until like a couple, like until he spoke up. And this kid had these, like, long, black, swooshed hair, right? He wore all black. He had these, like, rock band t-shirts, these big, like, black boots. He had this spiky, like, bracelet necklace type thing. And by the way, if you kind of dress emo, that's totally chill. I don't really care. As long as you don't act like this kid, you're cool in my book. I say this every single time. And this guy was kind of just known as the emo kid. And since I don't, I don't want to give him a name because I will forget it and then it'll be very awkward. But we're just going to call him the emo kid from this point on. And Ty didn't think anything negatively. He was just like, oh, this guy really does put a lot into the way he dresses. And he definitely dresses with a lot of character. Ty legitimately had no ill will or feelings of just like, ew, this guy's dressing different than me Ugh, or anything like that. It was just an observation. And so later on, you know, they have, like, they go to dinner together as a group, and then afterwards they have, like, the welcome to camp ritual, whatever. They all sit around a big campfire, and, like, they're, like, inaugurated in the class of 2015 or whatever. I don't know. This took, be- this took place a little while ago. But anyways, right, it's finally time for them to go back to their cabins to figure out which bunks they want, etc., like that. So anyways, right, they get back there and uh, they're just ran, they, the, the, the counselor dude who is their group B counselor, right, who's also sleeping in the cabins with them, is like, well, you know, just to make sure that no one feels left out, we've already assigned bunks to everyone. So he said, all right, Ty, you're in bunk A. He says, so-and-so, you're in bunk B, so-and-so, you're in bunk D. And then in bunk D, which they're in kind of like quads of four or they're in kind of like groups of two, but they're bunk beds, so it's four. So in Ty's group of four, The fourth one was the emo kid. So the four of them walk over, they go in their bunks, the camp counselor say, or the camp counselor says, yo, if if you really want, you can talk to your your bunkie about being top or bottom, doesn't really matter, lol, doesn't really matter. And so sure enough, Ty and his bunk didn't, they, they didn't really care. Ty was on the bottom, he didn't really care. But anyways, flip over to the, you know, the emo kid. And the emo kid is like, you know, with this guy, and we're gonna call this guy, uh, Benjamin. He's a throwaway name, but Benjamin was his bunk, and, you know, the Benjamin is like, hey, do you mind if I have the top? And the emo kid is like, no, I must have the top. I must keep watch at night. And everyone just kind of went silent in the, that group of three. They're like, uh, or group of four. They're kind of like, um, and Benjamin's like, all right, man, uh, that, that's fine. Bomb bunk's cool with me. He's like, good. You've made a good choice, because I will watch over us at night. I have spoken. <laughs> Everyone's like, okay, a lot of character in this guy. <laughs> funny guy, funny guy. <laughs> Anyways, things seem pretty normal. Pretty normal until, you know, it's time for them to go to bed. So anyways, uh, you know, they, you know, they go and they brush their teeth and then they get into bed and the camp counselor guy comes around and is like, all right, group B, section A, or whatever you want me to call you guys. Let's call you the A Squad. Yeah, um, we're going to have a lot of fun in the next two weeks. Uh, Just make sure no leaving the camp or no leaving the cabin overnight. Make sure that, you know, you follow any rules that, um, you know, we ask you to. Be nice and, you know, be nice and, like, fair to everyone and just, you know, have fun. Anyways, good night, guys. And he walks out of there. And so, you know, the lights are turned off and they were... Ty in his box in his top bunk and also Benjamin across from him. They were talking for a little bit and the emo kid didn't really join in. He was just sitting cross-legged, but like kind of like sitting very stiffly. So he was very much not going to bed. 
And eventually they're like, all right, I'm tired, good night. And they all kind of like go to sleep at that point. And about 20 minutes later, Ty has not fallen asleep because he's still feeling a little weird. He's in a new environment. He, it's like dark or whatever. He's a little bit scared. He's a young kid, whatever. He hears wrestling, right? And that's when he hears steps, right? And he realizes that the steps are coming from across from him and it's coming from the top bunk across from him, meaning the emo kid, you know, is starting to walk down the bunks. He's like, all right, well, there's nothing too weird with that. And that's when he hears, because there's like a door next to like their cabin. So there's like multiple exits from the cabin. He hears the door open and he watches as the emo kid walks out. So Ty at this point is like, what? So he kind of gets up and the person above him is completely asleep. But Benjamin, the kid from the side of him, is still awake. And he's like, yo, Benjamin, Benjamin. He's like, yo, what's up? He said, emo kid. Because I may, maybe said his actual name, but we're calling him emo kid. He's like, emo kid, he, he just walked out the door. Benjamin's like, you can't do that. And, you know, Ty's like, dude, but he did. So anyways, they both get up and they both look out the window. But they're trying to do it stealthily so that they're not caught, right? And they see the emo kid literally just standing there standing there looking into the moon it is the creepiest weirdest thing they have ever seen because the kid is just literally freaking standing there bro he's just standing there observing the night sky and they're all like oh my god dude that's freaking weird what is going on right now and uh you know sure enough you know ty and benjamin are like all right this kid is a little strange uh make sure he doesn't like strangle us to death or something in our sleep i'm a little freaked out and that's when the emo kid out of nowhere does a 180 degree turn and turns right looking at the window ty and benjamin quickly jump down they're like oh my god do you see us do you see us do you see us so like Ty starts to look up, he like peeks a little bit into the window and quickly goes down because he sees the emo kid walking towards the window. And he's like, dude, dude, Benjamin, he's walking towards the window. He's like, crawl back, crawl back to your bunks, crawl back to your bunks. So they both crawl out of sight of the window and they crawl into their bunks and it's dark enough in the room for them to do this without being super obvious. And they're both in their bunks and Ty turns around under the like under the uh, the sheets, right? And he peeks out, and the emo kid is literally standing right with his nose up against the window, looking in. And he's like, "Oh my god, this kid's insane!" Uh, anyways, emo kid walks back in quietly, goes up the stairs again, and sits in the bed, and supposedly goes to sleep. Ty doesn't fall asleep for like another hour afterwards, but eventually he opens his eyes to the camp counselor being like, "Ty, Ty, come on, come on, we're we're gonna be." late and Ty's like oh my god and everyone else is like yeah you slept in man actually everyone in this bunk besides emo kid slept in and that's because everyone was so freaked out that they couldn't go back to sleep but anyways first day activities they go outside and during the day they don't totally have to stick with their group they're actually assigned to random groups however a lot of people in the random group will be from their group because they're just trying to make friends within the group so, and they also go to meals together, so like lunch or dinner or whatever is together. And so anyways, the first activity of the day is not with the emo kid. It is actually like a kayak slash canoe or whatever, either or, one of those two. And, you know, Ty is a lot of fun. And they go back to dinner or lunch, sorry. They go to lunch as a group together. And Ty's, you know, talking about what he was doing and the counselor kind of went around the table and was like, oh, so Ty, what did you do? And Ty explains, oh, so Benjamin, what did you do? Benjamin explains, oh, so emo kid, what did you do? And he was like, you know, I prayed to the overlord. And they're like, oh, ha, ha, I don't remember that being an activity. Emo kid's like, it's not, it's necessary. And he's like, eh, okay. Anyways, guys, so I'm going to read off the people in your next activity because the way it worked was at meals. So at breakfast, the camp counselor read off what group everyone else was in for activities. And then at lunch, the camp counselor read off what people would be in for the uh, afternoon activities. And so Ty, uh, the camp counselor is like, oh, so Ty, uh, Benjamin, and Emo Kid, you're all going to be in the uh, group seven or whatever. And that happened to be like something with like wood tool making or something kind of cool like that so anyways after lunch they all head in that direction and ty and benjamin are like walking together however the emo kid it's not like they were walking away from him but the emo kid intentionally stands like or like walks 10 feet behind them never breaking the distance like they always have 10 feet between them and the emo kid never breaks it 
and he kind of walks weird. He walks very stiffly, yet he's kind of like propped forward at a 30 degree angle. His arms straight shoot like straight down, and he kind of waddles a little bit like a penguin. But it's very intimidating and very weird. And Benjamin kind of whispers like, Ben, Ben, dude, I, 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 I can feel his eyes in the back of my head. And, or not Ben, but Ty. Ty, I can feel his eyes in the back of my head. Ty's like, dude, Benjamin, I know, I know. So anyways, they get there. And the camp counselor dude is like, hey, guys, welcome to woodworking. It's going to be a lot of fun. You can make whatever tools or whatever you want. All I, all I ask is that when you're using the, this blade that, you know, I'm there and help you guiding it. And also, if you want any, like, I don't know, if you want any uh, inspiration or questions, come to me and it's all cool. So anyways... Ty and Benjamin sit down. They're like, oh, let's make, like, wooden knives or something. So they're given a pocket knife, and they're taught how to whittle away. It's like, always, oh, you got to face it away from you. Never face it towards you. If I see you guys facing it towards you, I got to revoke your knife privileges. Not, tr not trying to be that guy, but it's part of the jab. So anyways, right, they look over, and they see the emo kid. And he's, like, whittling away at the spoon, and he's or at this at the stick. And they're all like, um... So eventually, at the end of class, they're, or the end of the activity, they're asked to go around in a circle and say a little bit about what they made and show it off. So Ty's like, all right, well, here's like a butter knife and didn't turn out that well. And everyone laughs a little bit. And the camp counselor's like, dude, it's fire. That's your first time. Don't even worry about it. Eventually, he comes around to the emo kid. And the emo kid is like, whips out this like almost perfectly whittled. Like this is like really professionally well done. And... The camp counselor is like, wow, what is that? He's like, this is a wand for my warlock activities. Nobody better cross me now that I have access to my most powerful weapon of a wand. And everyone was like, what? Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment emo down below. That's the secret word of the day. I'll try and heart as many po comments as I possibly can that say emo. And then also, if you want to support the channel, watch a bunch of these videos in one sitting. I call it binge watching. So if you're sitting down, maybe playing video games or trying to go to sleep or something like that, watch like 10 videos in a row if possible. I know it's a big ask, but if you do so, please leave a comment down below. I'll heart it and even shout you out as on screen right now, shouting out some people who are supporting the channel and telling me about it. So yeah, thanks to these guys and you guys, and let's get right back to it. So fast forward a couple days into the week, and every single day, the emo kid's been doing weird things. So right now is a Wednesday. For context, they got there on a Sunday night. So this Wednesday night, Benjamin and uh, Benjamin's kind of becoming like the side character for Ty. Like he's becoming like pretty close friends. And Ty and Benjamin are kind of like talking about the emo kid and being like kind of tracking the weird things he's been doing. But tonight is one of the weirdest things he's done. So once again, Ty and Benjamin have been noticing that the emo kid has been going outside every single time, like 15 minutes after they go to sleep. So Ty and Benjamin, they both get in bed, and when the lights are turned off, they wait about 15 minutes, and sure enough, the emo kid gets out of bed and walks down the steps. And he walks outside, and he walks to kind of this like big forest clearing. So Ty and Benjamin, they both walk over, and they both look up, and they look out of the window. And they're looking out, and they see the emo kid. And normally, he just stands there blankly. But this time was different. He was getting to work. They saw the stick that he made in the wands, in like the wand craft whatever class, and or the woodsmanship craft uh, class. And he takes the the end of it that isn't pointy, where you do the spell, and he puts it into the dirt because he's standing on a pretty big dirt clearing, and he starts drawing this circle, this very big circle. And, and Ty looks over at Benjamin and is like, dude, what on earth is going on? Like, what is this kid doing? And Benjamin's like, dude, I have no idea. And they look at it, and he's drawn a complete perfect circle around him. And then he steps out of it. And then he starts making lines within the circle. He goes from the top of it, down, up, down, across, up. He's made a perfect upside-down pentagram. And if you don't know, that's basically like a sign of like ship or the something. So at this point, right, Ty and his friend are freaking out. They're like, oh my god, he's trying to like summon something. And sure enough, the emo kid starts like waving his wand around in these weird directions and starts like spinning around in a circle and making these like weird movements. And <laughs> if TikTok was around, I bet Ty would have been like, bro, is he trying to do a TikTok dance or something? But anyways, Ty and Benjamin are watching as the emo kid, after making the upside down pentagram, just starts waving it around and starts speaking. Like 
because they crack the window was cracked open a little bit and they start hearing like like some weird <laughs> okay maybe it wasn't as goofy as that but he was kind of talking these like weird tongues or whatever and that's when they heard the light flick on not in their room because they would have seen that they heard the light flick on in the middle cabin the middle part or the middle part of the cabin that is where the camp counselor lived. He must have heard or must have felt like some kind of disturbance or something because they see the emo kid drop his, like grab his wand and sprint out of there and sprint so quickly, he goes to the back room. And that's when like Ty and Benjamin are like, oh my God, he's sprinting here. So they quickly jump into bed and are, you know when, I don't know if you guys did this, but like when you're, when you were up later than you should and your mom is about to run into like open the room and you just jump into your bed and then you just stay super, super, super still that was them like it doesn't matter if you're sprawled out in a weird position you're staying as still as possible so they jump in they're super still and and they watch as the door opens and the emo kid runs in and runs up up to like the second bunk and just sits in there and that's when like they see like literally 10 seconds after the emo kid gets into his bed they see the light flicker on and the and the camp counselor who's for cabin b or whatever walks in is like Hey, 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 I saw something out there. And you guys go out there? And, like, you know, everyone's pretending to be like, what? Like, they just woke up. The emo kid is really pretending to be like, what? I don't know what's going on, bro. And obviously, Ty and Benjamin, you know, they're trying to, like, pretend like they weren't up watching the whole thing. And the kid on the very top of, like, uh, uh, Ty just is still completely asleep. So, counselor's like, all right, whatever. He's like, all right, well, remember, it's a punishable offense if you guys leave the cabin during night, like, you will be forced to go back home, and you don't want to miss the fun retreat we're doing this weekend. And they're all like, all right. They were like, yeah, it wasn't us. I don't know what it is. And that's when the camp counselor is like, what? And he sees, he looks outside the window, and that's when he sees it. He's like, stay here. And he goes outside, and they all watch as he walks outside, and he sees, like, the, the upside-down pentagram, like, drawn into the circle or whatever, drawn, drawn into the dirt, and he's just looking at it. And he takes out like his iPhone 4, because it was like 2015 or whatever, and he takes a photo of it with like flash, takes another photo, steps back, takes another photo, and everyone else pretends to be asleep as they go back in. Next day rolls around, and they're walking to their first activity from uh, breakfast. And Ty and Benjamin happen to be in the same group. And Ty's like, dude, the emo kid's insane. Like, that was ridiculous last night. And Benjamin's like, I've never been more freaked out besides the first night, bro. Like, this, this kid's insane. And at this point, they start talking about the camping retreat. So I mentioned this like a couple minutes ago when the camp counselor said, you guys, you guys don't want to miss the special fun camping retreat we're doing. So they stayed out in cabins, but part of the wilderness camp, whatever, at the very end of it, at the very, like the last Friday night to Saturday, they go, they hike out kind of far, farther out into the woods. They bring like uh, camping equipment and they kind of like camp out like that. So they both of like Ty and Benjamin were a little bit worried because that basically meant that they were going by group and they were going to be out in the woods in tents by themselves with the creepy emo kid. So anyways, let's just fast forward to that day. It's Friday and everyone is kind of packing their little bags and the camp counselor for each group packs their like supply kit, medical supplies, radio the food that they're going to be eating. And he's like, all right, everyone grab like, um, everyone like groups of two grab a tent. And so sure enough, people pair up and Benjamin and Ty are together and they grab this tent and they start walking over to the campsite. And Ty and Benjamin are like, Benjamin was like, dude, I heard that like, you know, there's only like enough tents so that like we have to pair up with someone. And he said, I heard that it's random. I heard that we don't get to choose who we pair up with. Ty's like, dude, that's insane. We already have friends. I get in the beginning them assigning us stuff, but like we know people now. This is the last day. Like why would we need to sign bunk with someone random? And they're and Benjamin's like, dude, I don't know if that's true. That's just what I heard. So eventually they get to the campsite. Anyways, so they get to the campsite, right? And, you know, they start doing, they set up their kind of like, they sit around a bunch of logs. So they, they like light a little fire and they have like baked beans in a can or something. Then they also go out and they kind of like clear the land for to put down the tents. They all set up a bunch of tents in the group of two that they carried it over in. And Ty at this point is thinking, all right, we're good because I'm going to be with Benjamin because, I mean, we're in groups of two already. Why would they need to reassign us groups? And so once again, they were asked back to the campsite, or not the, the original campsite, but the little campfire they made. 
it's getting kind of late and the camp counselor's like, all right, guys, time for me to assign you your bunk mates or your camp tent mates. And Ty in his head is like, no, 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 no. So Benjamin and so-and-so, so-and-so and so-and-so. So, and you know when there's like that one guy you don't want to be with or something like that, and like you're being assigned in a list and you, and you don't hear your name, but you also don't hear his name. And the number of combinations starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller and you start freaking out. Well, this is what was happening to Ty until he realized that he was doomed before, you know, the words were even said because the camp counselor went through the entire list, but he didn't say Ty's name or the emo kid's name. And that's when the camp counselor said, Ty and the emo kid, obviously said his real name, but you know what I mean. And Ty was just like, Oh, I'm not gonna make it tonight. I'm not gonna survive. I better write some like uh, my some letters to my mom saying I love you because I'm not making it tonight. Oh my god! And Benjamin is just staring at him like, and afterwards walks up to him and says, "Hey, if you need help, yeah, like we gotta come up with some kind of signal." So Ty's like, "Okay, I'm gonna like, I don't like." I'm just going to run out of there and I'm going to run over to like no signals, no nothing. I'm running over to your campsite if anything happens. And Benjamin's like, all right, that's totally fine, man. So anyways, Ty goes up to the emo kid. He's like, so looks like we're bunking. And the emo kid is like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> and Ty's like, yeah, man. He's like, well, I guess you're one of my more favorite mortals that I know. And Ty's like, <laughs> yeah. So they both like put down their sleeping bags in this kind of very cramped tent. And Ty is just sitting there like, okay, okay. And they have this kind of light. And it's like one of those like uh, battery powered lights. And the emo kid's like, good night, Ty. And turns it off. And Ty's like, <gasps> like starts completely freaking out. He's like, okay, okay. I can't see anything, but we're okay. And that's when he hears the emo kid stand up. And Ty's like, no, 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 no. And the emo kid is like standing above him. And he's like, all right, well, maybe I should just accept my destiny. And that's when the emo kid, instead of striking him over there with a rock or something, just leaves. He opens up the camp tent and walks out. And Ty is like, what? So Ty kind of like gets up and he looks out and he sees the emo kid and the emo kid is like standing or is like crouching on all fours. And then he starts howling, starts howling to the full moon. He's like, Ey! but it's like a really weird howl. And Ty's just like, what? And that's when he hears the kind of like the camp counselor who's with us be like, hey, hey, who's that? You're not allowed to be outside your campsite. And you just see the emo kid go, oh, uh oh, and just sprints towards like the uh, sprints towards the tent. So Ty jumps back into his bed, and the emo kid, who's not very coordinated apparently, instead of like jumping through the wind, like the the open flap, jumps right through the tent. So breaks right through the tarp of the tent, cracks the entire thing. The entire thing comes collapsing down. And Ty just, Ty just like has his eyes closed as the entire tent falls on top of him. And that's when you hear all this yelling and the camp counselor's like, what's going on over here? Are you guys all right? And he just like starts ruffling, rum rummaging through all the like the rubble and stuff. And Ty starts like getting up and he pushes the stuff off of him. The camp counselor was like, was that you out there doing those howling noises? He's like, no. And then sure enough, the emo kid is just standing there like you. And he says to him like, you wouldn't understand what I was doing. And the camp counselor was like, it was, oh, I told you before that you can't be leaving your tent during the nighttime. Like, after I said goodbye, you were supposed to go to your tent and not leave it. You were out there. And he's like, I was performing a protection ritual. And camp, camp counselor was like, what? I was performing a protection ritual so that everyone would be safe at night from the demons and ghosts of the underworld. Camp counselor was like, uh, what? And at that point, right, they just realized, okay, this is a lost cause. And at this point, the worst thing was that uh, there was nowhere for them to sleep because uh, the camp was completely destroyed, or the tent was completely destroyed. So the camp counselor was like, fine, you two, bring your sleeping bags. You can sleep in my tent. So the three of them are, are kind of like crushed in there. And eventually the camp counselor was like, all right, you two are in here. I'm going to sleep outside. No shenan shenanigans. So it was the most uncomfortable sleep of Ty's entire life. But eventually, the day is over. He gets up. You know, they start packing up their stuff, and they're walking back to the campsite. And that's when Ty meets up with Benjamin and is like, dude, 
Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Uh, we got a story today that I think you will enjoy, so sit back, relax, and let's get right into it. We're going to call the subscriber who submitted the story Ian. So anyways, Ian had a friend, and we're going to call this friend Ben. And you know, I don't know if this has ever happened to you. This has definitely happened to me, and I'm sure it's definitely happened to a lot of you guys. But have you ever had a friend, and y you like that friend, you're close with them, you want the best for them, right? You want the best for this friend. But this friend uh, decides that he's going to, uh, you know, enter an entanglement. He's going to start, uh, you know, seeing some girl who's terrible, right? Or it could be, you know, gender roles reversed. I don't care, right? You have a friend who starts to see someone and you know that they're terrible, right? And you, you kind of try to explain it. Like, I mean, I mean, I can't just be a complete, like, but I, I can't be that guy and be like, yeah, you know, this girl you really like. She's the worst. But you also, I don't know, it feels like a moral responsibility that you need to say something. I don't totally know. Anyways, Ian was in a very similar situation to this, right? His friend started dating this girl. Or, okay, wasn't dating this girl. But he was very, at this point in the story, he was actively flirting with this girl who we're just going to call the emo girl. So you already know that it's going to be quite quite an adventure, right? She was kind of like the goth emo girl, whatever. And uh, that's totally fine. Like, that's literally totally fine. I don't care how you dress. Like, if you want to dress like that, that's fine. I don't care. I mean, uh, that's that's cool. It's uh, it's a vibe, I guess. Whatever. However, um, uh, I mean, I think you can read the title. Uh, this emo girl definitely goes a little bit too far. And so anyways, you know, Ian is talking with his friend Ben. And Ben is talking to Ian about like, oh, you know, this girl, like, she's great, whatever. Uh, I'm just going to call her emo girl. And I'm going to ref refer to her as the emo girl. Uh, they're going to call her Stacy or something, whatever her actual name is. I just don't know what it is. But anyways, right, you know, Ben was like, yeah, you know, the emo girl and I have been like talking for a while. Things have been really good. You know, she seems really cool. And Ben is just kind of like looking at him like, yeah, I don't know. Because look. Okay, there wasn't like an exact there wasn't exactly a huge red flag, right? I mean, there was pretty clearly a red flag just later on, right, in the story as you can probably tell by the title of this video. However, um uh, yeah, at this point there was no like specific thing, like the emo girl hadn't done anything specifically. So it's not like Ian could say, "Oh, Ben, like you shouldn't talk to her because she did X or Y." He all he could really say is like I don't like her, and I don't know why, which is not really a great reason. So uh, Ian really had to sit back and like, just watch his friend, Ben, slowly but surely become entangled with a girl who kind of sucked, and it was very clearly later on that she super sucked. But anyways, and unfortunately for Ben, not like that. Anyways, um, so uh, I just distracted myself. Um, but anyways, so after a little bit of time, you know, Ben eventually gets into an official relationship with this girl. No, no, no. I mean, this is this is high school. This is like this isn't like middle school official relationship. I don't know if you guys got married in uh, in in kindergarten. I had a lot of like there's a lot of kids in my class who got quote unquote married in first grade. And the question was like, OK, we just got married. What do we do? And the whole point was that they wanted better. Uh, they wanted a better, you know, tax bracket. But anyways, right. So. Yeah, they were officially in a relationship. They were officially a thing. And one of the worst things for Ian during this time period was that, you know, Ben was like, well, since she is my girlfriend now, I think it's only right that she comes and sits with us. And Ian in his head was like, oh, no, dude, no, no. So anyways, right, Ian, you know, Ian wants to sit with his best friend, Ben. And uh, he's sitting at lunch, and sure enough, the emo girl comes over. And she is like, her head is like in her phone. She has like one earbud in. She's blasting like heavy metal, like, everything's awful. Society doesn't understand me. Yeah, yeah. Uh. It's kind of like music along those lines. Um, and, uh... She just, like, wasn't super paying attention, and, uh, like, so Ben was like, all right, well, you know, I, I, or Ian was like, you know what, since my friend is dating her, I'm gonna not be an ass and, like, actually try and talk to her. Like, I think that's probably a good idea. So Ben was like, uh, or Ian was like, so, and the emo girl just does not make eye contact with him, and for all we know, she's not even paying attention. How's it going, emo girl? Uh, my name's Ben. And she pulls out her AirPod, she's like, or her headphone, she's like, what? And, ben, and Ian's like, my name's Ian. I'm friends with Ben, your boyfriend. She's like, okay. Ian's like, 
okay, Ben, I, okay, he didn't say this, but he was basically just like, okay, Ben, bro, I tried, look, I tried, I can't do it, I'm sorry, I tried to have a conversation with her, just the fact that I'm sitting here with her should be good enough, right? So yeah, this goes on for a little while, and this, this kind of continues to go on, unfortunately, it just is just, it just is what it is, right? And, uh, so, you know, they just, there's no sign of them breaking up. Ian didn't want, you know, Ben to be sad or anything. He didn't want him to be, like, unhappy. But at the same time, he was kind of hoping that, you know, Ben would uh, break up with her, that he would see the light of day and uh, re may maybe realize that, I, I, I don't know, I don't know, maybe this, just, maybe this just wasn't the relationship for him. But unfortunately, no, that's not the case. So this story really, really takes place, because this is kind of his background. This story really takes place one Friday night. There's this uh, very big, like, there's just like a, uh, not a block party, but there's a party hosted by someone in their class. Their parents are out. And the kid basically invites everyone in the grade because, you know, this kid, the little backstory is why. Because normally, like, if you were to do this, you would just invite people you knew because it's kind of a terrible idea to invite everybody, including people you don't know, to a party that you're not really supposed to be having. Like, that's just a terrible idea. However, this kid wasn't, like, super popular, and he thought that this was a perfect opportunity for him to become that guy. You know, I'm going to become that guy now. But uh, yeah, so sure enough, um, he invites literally everyone. So that's everyone from, uh, you know, Ben, Ian, the emo girl to everyone else in the class. The party ends up being a complete disaster at the end and he gets in a lot of trouble. But that's not the main focus of this story. So anyways, right, you know, uh, Ian is like, I don't know, he's nothing better to do on this Friday night. I mean, he could do his homework or whatever, but uh, let's be real, guys. That's just not simply happening tonight. So uh, Ian decides that he's going to go over. He sends a text to Ben being like, hey, man, are you going to go over? And uh, Ben was like, yeah, I think I'm going to go over. Like uh, me and uh, me and the emo girl are walking over now because this guy lived. They all live in the same neighborhood ish. Like they all lived walking distance by walking distance. I mean, uh, give or take 20 or less minutes. Um, so, you know, Ian was kind of looking at the text message being like, oh, nice. I am super excited that you're bringing the emo girl again. Anyways, uh, Ian obviously didn't say that. He's like, bet, like, see you there. Cool, whatever. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Ian was uh, at this point actually debating if he wanted to go or not because he wanted to go and it was looking at, he's either gonna sit in his room staring into the blank walls, questioning his life and everything around him, or he's gonna go to the party where he's most unfortunately going to have to run into the emo girl at some point and have to deal with her, uh, with her, yeah. Yeah, that's bad enough. It was a close call. It really was a close call between the two, but eventually uh, Ian was like, yeah, screw it, I'm just gonna go. So Ian gets his stuff, he goes over and he walks. He goes to the front of the door. The person who invited him greets him. He's like, hey, welcome, what's good? Ian looks inside. It is like a total disaster. Like people are spilling stuff everywhere. Stuff is knocked over. Ian immediately knows that this kid's kind of freaking out a little bit because it definitely came out of hand. Guys, I, I mean, obviously, I don't endorse when you're older for you to, like, wait for your parents to leave and then throw a party because, you know what? I never did that. However, it's not like I don't know people who did. Uh, if I had to give a little piece of advice because maybe you'll learn something on my channel for once, uh, if you're going to do that, just don't invite random people. That is a terrible, terrible idea. It's definitely a recipe for disaster. That's all I'm going to say. But anyways, yeah, so Ian gets in there and this is kind of like walking around. Eventually, he sees Ben. He's like, hey, like, what's good? And Ben's like, hey, man, how's it going? And uh, at this point, Ian's like, oh, like, I thought you were going to be with your girlfriend. And he's like, yeah, I mean, we got here together. And then we kind of got separated and I haven't found her since. But, you know, I'm, you know, she has other friends. I'm going to let her, like, hang out with them. And Ian was, I Ian had to hold back a little bit because he kind of knew for a fact that, uh, no, this emo girl did not have any other friends. Nope. It was literally just uh, her boyfriend. And then that's the only other person she hung out with. Um, there was no, like, kind of, like, click of, like, society hates us kids at the school so uh yeah it was literally just her and uh so ian was a little bit suspicious he didn't okay he didn't think that she was like cheating on him or anything she didn't jump to th he didn't jump to that conclusion right however you know he was like okay well that's that's still a little weird like i'm not gonna lie that's, that's a little weird but he didn't say anything he didn't want to like spook out ben because like it's at that point it was a complete conspiracy theory like why would he why would he spook out like why do you spook ben no no point so he's like all right bro like that's cool 
So Ben and Ian actually spent some pretty good quality time for like 10 minutes or so, nothing crazy. But just like for the first time in a while, I'm, I mean, he's seen him a couple times without, you know, the emo girl girlfriend there. However, this was the first time in a while, at least it's felt like that. It's just been Ben and Ian back together. The gang's all here, guys. Like it's been a while since that's happened. So Ben was pretty happy um, or Ian was pretty happy. I mean, I guess they were both pretty happy. But eventually Ian's like, all right, well, I got to go to the bathroom. And the thing was, there was a bathroom, but the bathroom was on the second floor. And there wasn't a lot of people on the second floor. In fact, there was a sign saying, please don't go up here unless you got to go to the bathroom. Like the kid who had the, the party or whatever printed that out saying like, don't enter, but it says like only bathroom or something. Uh, so, you know, anyways, Ben goes, uh, Ian goes up there and he is walking to the bathroom when he passes by, you know, the bedroom and he hears like noises. Don't, don't, not, not anything too weird. Not, okay, okay. You guys are going to bring it to places that I did not. That's you guys being weird. That's not me. So stop it. Anyways, I, I mean, he hears like, I don't know, kissing noises, which honestly sound gross. Like I, whenever, like I really just, I'm not trying to hear that, man. I'll, first of all, first of all, I'm not trying to see that. Let me just say, as a sophomore, I can now speak down on the freshman. Sorry, it's just it's just how it works here. Dude, stop with the PDA in the dining hall. Please! God! I don't want to see that. Is it that hard? You have a room. You both have rooms. Jeez, okay, you know what? I'm not, I'm not gonna let this tangent take me away from the story. I'm sorry. I just had to say that. I had to put it out there on record. I do not approve of these freshmen in the freaking PDA, dude. Get out of here. Anyways, um, so, you know, so, uh, you know, Ian's walking up. He goes to the bathroom. He hears these, like, kissing noises. He's like, oh, okay, like, that's kind of lame. Like, you're in, like, this kid's parents' bedroom. Like, can you just not do that somewhere else? Like, this kid's hosting the party. He very clearly said he doesn't want people up here. And I'm pretty sure he doesn't want two random kids on his bed doing whatever, uh, on un un unholy stuff that they're gonna do, right? So, yeah, uh, he he's like, okay, whatever. Obviously, though, Ian does not want to, you know, walk in on this. No one wants to walk in on that. It's, it's just a lot of, it it it's not what he's trying to do today, right? Fair enough. So Ian goes to the bathroom, washes his hands, um, maybe, and then he, you know, he gets up and he's walking out. And the thing is, right, the, the, the parents' bedroom is closer to the stairs than the bathroom is, so he had to walk past the bedroom to get to the bathroom. So as he's walking past the bedroom, or he's about to walk past the bedroom, the door flings open, and these two people who are in the process of, like, making out or whatever fall, basically fall out, right? And they basically crash into him. And you know who he sees? Some random kid and Ben's girlfriend, the emo girl, right? So at this point... Ian is just looking at the emo girl. And the emo girl, instead of having this, like, kind of look of, like, this in intense RBF, right? This kind of look of, like, everybody sucks. I, I understand the world in ways people don't. They don't understand just how bad it is, man. Uh, like, all this kind of, like, lame stuff, right? She was looking at him with this, this complete look of terror. Kind of, like a, kind of like a deer in the headlights look. She just knew at this point that it was over. That just, it was a little too late. And she's just looking at him. Ian's looking at the emo girl, the emo girl's looking at Ian, and Ian immediately blurts out, like, were you just making out with that dude? And the dude is, like, looks over, he's like, yeah. Kind of like, I don't know, a little cocky, a little sarcastic, whatever. Ian looks at him, he's like, you know this girl had a boyfriend who's here? Or, no, no, he says, do you know that this guy, had, like, this girl has a boyfriend? And the kid's like, nah, dude, like, I'm not trying to be a homewrecker. And then Ian goes on to say, and the boyfriend, did you know that he's here? And the kid just has this look of, like, oh, shoot. So he's just, he's like, ah, uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I have to go, man. I'm sorry. I'm busy. So the kid literally runs out. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure, like, this kid was, like, afraid that, like, uh, okay. Ben was not some, like, 300-pound football player, but, you know, this kid's not taking any chances, right? He's not taking any chances. He doesn't want any trouble tonight. So this kid's immediately out of here. He runs out. And at this point, it's literally just Ian and the emo girl. And the emo girl's just dead silent. And Ian's like, dude, you know I'm going to tell Ben. He's downstairs. Like, do you have anything to say? And she looks at him and she says, it's not my fault. And Ian looks at her and he's like, what? Like, are, are you sure? Like, I'm pretty sure like that was you, man. And she's like, no, you don't understand. You won't understand. And Ian's like, well, I'm going to be telling him either way. So, I mean, understand or not, maybe you should just tell me just in case I do. And she's like, you're not going to get it, but 
The dark spirits convinced me to do so. I was casting a spell last night, and they told me that, you know, for me to complete the ritual, I needed to make out with some random guy that wasn't my boyfriend. Ian is just looking at her with this look of, I knew this girl was crazy. I knew it. I knew it. Ben should listen to me forever and ever if I say anything ever. Because I'm right. I was right. Yeah, so Ian is kind of looking at her with this look of like, are you serious, dude? Like, that you can't actually be serious. First of all, if anyone ever says this to you, first of all, I, I've heard some pretty funny excuses for cheating, but this one's definitely up there. Um, if, you, if your excuse for cheating were, was, the dark spirits convinced me to do so, then no, 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 you, you cheated, man. I don't, think, I, I don't think you're supposed to be in a relationship. Also, a little bit of advice. Um, uh, if, if you're in a relationship and you guys go off to college and you go to two different colleges, I'm not going to say it's not going to work because I do know some people where it does work. But I also know a lot of people where you will be cheated on and it will probably not because of the, it probably won't be because of the dark spirits. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm, I'm not a wizard, so maybe I just don't understand. Maybe I'm just part of society and I just don't get it. Anyways, uh, yeah, so Ian looks at her and he's like, um, yeah, you are right. And the emo girl for a second is like, what? Because for a second she thinks that like, oh, wait, he, he agrees with me? And Ian's like, yeah, you are right. I have no idea what you just said or what any of that means. But you know what I do know? That I'm going to go down right now and talk to Ben. And she starts pleading. She's like, no, no, don't do that. He's all I have. And Ian was like, well, if he's all you have, then you probably shouldn't have cheated on him. Like, uh, I really don't think that's such a crazy thing for me to say. I really don't think that is like... I, I, like, I just don't think that that's, like, the most absurd thing I've ever said in my life. I mean, I've said some pretty crazy stuff, but I, I just don't think that's up there. I, I really don't. Like, I'm a normal guy. I'm not, I'm not spewing stuff all the time, but damn, like, that's not that bad. And she's kind of looking at him. She's like, please, Ben. Like, you don't understand. And Ben's like, no, nah, dude, I, like, I'm, I'm going down right now. And that's when she changes her tone, and she's like, you don't understand the, the powers I have. Ben kind of looks at her. It's like, what? And she's like, you don't understand. I am in contact with the dark spirits. And if I want to put a hex on you, I can put a hex on you. I've collected some of your hair. Therefore, I can put a spell on you that you won't be able to break. Your life will be miserable. Do you want that? Ian's like, dude, I'm going down in the next five seconds to go talk to Ben. If you have anything that you want me to say to him, then tell me now, but you got five seconds. She's like, <laughs> her last, like literally her, 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 her Hail Mary is like, I'll, I'll make out with you. She literally says, remember, remember what this progression has been. Remember what this progression has been. Caught making out with some guy. Says it wasn't me. Says the dark spirits made her. Starts crying, being like, please, no. Then says, I will put a spell on you. The final thing she says is like, if you don't tell him, I'll make out with you. And at this point, Ian's like, ah, oh, hell not, no. And he gets up, he walks down those stairs. He's like a track, he's a heat-seeking missile. And the only heat he's looking for is his friend. He finds him immediately, goes up to Ben. He's like, dude, I just caught your girlfriend cheating with some other guy. And at this point, Ben's like, are you serious, dude? Because Ben kind of, like, Ben doesn't even go, I don't believe you. At this point, I think he had some suspicions. And he's like, oh my god, what, like, did she say anything? And Ian's like, yeah, she said that it was because the dark spirits made her. And then she also offered to make out with me if I didn't tell you. And at this point, right, Ian, Ben's like, oh my, like, are you serious? And Ian's like, I think she's still upstairs. So Ian and Ben walk to the stairs. And uh, sure enough, you know who they meet at the bottom of the stairs? Yeah, his girlfriend. Yeah, so at this point, the emo girl is just looking at both Ian and Ben, and Ben and Ian are just looking at the emo girl, and they're just kind of all looking at each other. And uh, the emo girl says, if you don't leave a like on the video right now, she'll put a hex on you. But she also says, um, "So I mean, don't take the risk, guys. Just leave a like on the video. It's not that hard. And also comment emo if you made it this far into the video. I forgot to do that earlier. But anyways, she kind of looks at him, and she's like, she looks at Ben. She's like, Ben, baby. The dark spirits made me do it. And Ben's like, dude, what the hell are you saying? And she's like, ba baby, you don't understand. It, it, I, I was doing a curse last night. And the spirits told me to complete the curse. I needed to make out with it. And Ben says, no, no, I'm not hearing this. I'm sorry, we're done. This is probably long overdue, but we're done. And she's like, 
no, if you break up with me, I'm going to put a spell on you. And he's like, okay, do it. And she says, you don't, you don't want that. You don't want a curse on you. He's like, well, actually, like, I really, I don't, I don't care. She said, no, you, you don't want a curse on you. You don't want that. You're not ready for that. And Ian's just watching this, and Ian's so excited because not only is Ben about to break up with his ex-girlfriend, now ex-girlfriend, but they're going out in a big fireball. They will never come back together again, right? And uh, kind of all of Ian's feelings for the last couple months are being validated right now. So Ian's having a great time. Kind of at the expense of his friend, but whatever, right? Anyways, uh, yeah, Ian is, uh, Ben is like, no, like, I don't care. Put a spell on me. We are not getting back together. And she says, fine. Then prepare for the worst next couple weeks of your life. Yeah, so uh, skip ahead a little bit. You know, Ian and Ben, uh, they stay at the party, actually. The emo girl leaves. Uh, they, they, they've broken up at this point. And for the next week, uh, Ian actually, or Ian and Ben actually have a pretty great week. They do really well on tests. They have a good time. They, get, they don't get food poisoning or anything. And every single day, they say, oh, uh, curse? Question mark? Question mark? Curse? No? No curse? Aw, oh, man, that's crazy. It's almost as if it isn't real. Wow. Yeah, so they actually never really see the emo girl that much again. I think they passed in the hallway a few times, and that was awkward. But yeah, Ben and the emo girl never get back together. Ian is you know, doesn't really rub it in um, because, like, look, everyone has that time. Everyone has that moment. Ian knows that probably in the future he's going to do something completely stupid like this, and he doesn't totally want to be super made fun of it for it, so he's kind of, he's being, ch he's being pretty chill about it, and he's, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I I if you want to, the moral of the story is, I don't know, just don't, just don't do whatever the girl did in this one, because don't, just don't do that. Also, I'll leave a like in the video, um, or this girl will put a curse on you. Uh, she, it actually works, guys, so just leave a like in the video. If you want to support the channel, literally the best thing you can do right now, if you want to support the channel, the best thing you can do is let another one of my videos play. Click on one of them on the end screen, or click on another one of my videos. All you got to do, thank you so much. Peace. Today we got a story time of a cringy emo kid who literally believes that his stinkiness makes him a Sigma male and extremely attractive. Uh, if you're not prepared for one of the cringiest stories of all time, then I don't know if you should watch this, man. I really don't. But if you are one of the few brave ones, sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's jump right into it, man. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted today's story, Liam. So anyways, right, uh, Liam was in class one day. And in this class, there's a kid who we're going to call the emo kid. So first of all, I want to make it really clear. If you like dressing emo or whatever, I don't care. If you like dressing all black, fine, fair, whatever. I don't really care. However, if you act like this emo kid, then maybe, maybe you want to reconsider uh, some things that you do. Because this emo kid, anyways, let me just give a description. Long black hair. Everything's in black. Black nails, black shoes, whatever. That's a style, whatever. It's really how this kid acts where it uh, becomes a little bit of a situation. So anyways, this all starts one day when Liam is in class. And the emo kid normally sits in a different place, but I guess today decided to sit behind e Liam. And uh, Liam could immediately tell that the emo kid was sitting behind him because, um, how do I put this politely? Bro stank. That's the most polite way I can put it, dude. Yeah, so as soon as the kid sat behind him, Liam was like, oh, good heavens, boy. Yeah, no, but, like, Liam could just tell that, like, there was a ominous presence behind him. Not because, like, he could physically, fe like, just tell. He could smell it, bro. He could smell the freaking emo kid. I think it was, like, part of his, like, regiment was to add, like, no. And the thing is, right, he actually has a reason for not showering. As you guys will about to, t yes, you guys will about to hear, the emo kid believes that it makes him more attractive because it makes him a sigma male if he doesn't shower. So, uh, yeah, let me just say that Liam didn't need the emo kid to tell him that he doesn't shower to know that the kid didn't shower, because Liam could just tell from having a functioning uh, nose, right? From having functioning nostrils in his nose and actual, like, smell receptors that worked, he could tell that the emo kid definitely, definitely never took a shower. Um, so yeah, Liam was just sitting there in class. He's like, oh God, because like, look, Liam already has a hard enough time paying attention in class. And then the emo kid had with his stank Sigma grind set, whatever has to sit behind him too. Like this is on hard mode. Like Liam entered class and he must have selected boss mode before getting out of bed and going to school, bro. Like, oh my God. So that's when Liam feels a tap on his shoulder. And obviously it's from the emo kid because the emo kid is the only guy directly behind him. He could literally smell the emo kid coming from 100 miles away, but that's beyond the point. So Liam turns around, and the emo kid is like, 
Hello, Liam. And Liam literally almost collapsed in his seat and uh, died from cardiac arrest from the smell. Because the emo kid must have also thought that never brushing his teeth literally ever was also Sigma grind set, sexy AF, bringing sexy back, super bad, literally the Rizzler 2.0, right? He might have thought that as well. Because, uh, yeah, bro was just, bro was just a, uh, a stewing, um, it was like a stew, bro, a little pot. A, it was like he put every smell imaginable that isn't great into, like, a pressure cooker and then just left it for, like, 10 years, right, bro? Bro was smelling crazy. Bro was smelling mad funk. Anyway, so he's like, hello, Liam. <laughs> just, like, literally breathing his, like, I don't know, his, like, death scent everywhere. And Liam was like, what's good, bro? Try not to cry his eyes out. Try not to lose every drop of sodium and water out of his body from the tears just streaming down his his eyes because they can't, they're watering, bro. They're trying to protect themselves. But anyways, like, the, the emo kid's like, did you know that I am actually, actually, literally a Sigma male? And uh, emo, uh, Liam's like, bruh, what? And he's like, did you not hear me, Liam? I am literally a Sigma male. And uh, Liam's like, okay, bro. Like, W for you, I guess. Congrats on being a Sigma male. And emo kid's like, yeah, you wouldn't get it because I'm like the popular loner in class. Like, dude... All the ladies are like, oh my god, he's such a popular loner. <laughs> oh my god, I, 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 I'm sorry, I keep breaking character. Oh my god, I'm such, he's such a popular loner. And he, they're all like so into me or something. Um, do you want to like learn about the Sigma lifestyle, Liam? And Liam's like, oh god, no, dude. Liam's like, ah, bro, I don't know. Like, we're in class right now. I really think we should be paying attention. And the emo kid's like, dude, this is, school is garbage. Literally embrace Sigma male uh, lifestyle. Like, I'll tell you all about it. So, basically, and like, <laughs> Liam literally said, no, I don't want to hear about the Sigma grind set, bro. I'm sorry. It's not something I want to do. And the emo kid's like, well, actually, I don't care. I'm going to tell you about the Sigma grind set anyways. This is how you get the ladies, Liam. Yeah, so he's like, so, anyways, you might have noticed that I have a bit of a peculiar aroma. And Liam's like, yeah, that's one way to put it, bro. You kind of smell like, uh, you smell like a Taco Bell's bathroom after an extremely busy day, bro. Like, I don't know if peculiar, peculiar is good enough of a word to describe that, bro. Yeah, so anyways, the emo kid goes on to tell Liam that basically um, that his interesting, strange, different, his Sigma aroma actually comes from the fact that he has intentionally doesn't shower doesn't use deodorant, wears the same clothes every day, um, never brushes his teeth, which explains why, like, Liam almost, ex like, his brain almost melted and dribbled out of his ears when he just took a whiff of when this kid was talking to him, and never does anything hygienic ever. Oh, yeah, wears the same underwear every day, so you know that's already smelling like David Jones' locker, bro. Like, oh, my God. Anyways, but he does all this stuff because, basically, in the emo kid's words, he's like, so, Liam, basically, I, I do all this because you have to realize that here's the thing. Women are primitive species, which, bro, if you ever find yourself uttering the sentence, women are primitive species, then you've messed up. I don't know exactly where along the lines that you screwed up, but, bro, you want to you want to backtrack a couple steps and maybe change course a little bit so you don't end up saying women, women are primitive species. Like, bro, you can't be saying that, bro, especially when you're smelling like, I don't know, I'm smelling like that, that sus sock in someone's bedroom, bro. You're smelling weird. Anyways, right, so sure enough, he's like, yes. And basically, biologically, and this, and bro's talking like he's got a PhD in women's studies, bro, like, or not women's studies like gender studies, I mean women's studies like the study of getting, getting the, getting laid, bro, that's, that's your PhD right there, this is his thesis, this is dissertation, but anyways, uh, yeah, so sure enough, he's like, well, basically, so here's how I'm thinking about it, so women are very primitive species, first of all, you are messed up saying that, but he's like, and, so they're like the bi biology, and, um, he's just trying to say buzzwords to sound smart, so yes, so basically, think about it like this, Liam. Did the cavemen shower? No. Did the cavemen use underwear, change their underwear? No. Which, bro, cavemen didn't have underwear, and if they did, they probably changed it. Did the cavemen use artificial deodorant? Liam, like, literally, using deodorant is, like, the most anti-woman thing. Like, they hate it. Like, biologically, they are ingrained to stay away from the chemicals. I will say, some deodorants 
do have some pretty sus chemicals in them. So on, on the rail, though, you should make sure to do a little bit of research in that and, and before you just slam up your pores up there. You should be careful with your deodorants. But that doesn't mean that you should never wear deodorant, bro. Like, hey, if you're smelling like, I don't know, if you're smelling like not so great, maybe consider it. Yeah, so uh, anyways, he keeps on going like, yes. And here's the thing. So when women smell all the chemicals in your deodorant, like you, you're smelling like a lot of chemicals right now. So basically, smelling like a lot of chemicals is the equivalent of saying you don't smell like, uh, I don't know, literally a hippopotamus's anus, bro. Like, I, I don't know. He's like, you smell like all those chemicals are releasing uh, hormones and trombones and baloney in women's system. Like, bro literally just is starting to say random words to be scientific. And they will immediately be like, ew, I do not like him. But when they smell me, they understand that my must and my odor is actually very, very natural. So Liam looks at the emo kid and is like, bro, your hair is dyed black. How is that natural? Which is a pretty good point. If the emo kid is really believing that he is a Sigma male grind set, uh, attractive Rizzler 10 out of 10 spitting game dude, or I don't even know how to say it, right? Uh, that like, it, because it's, he's all natural, which I don't think all natural just means smelling like garbage, bro. Lol. Um, but uh, yeah, so <laughs> sure enough, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're doing all that and then you're using hair dye as well, like, doesn't that kind of go against what you're saying? I'm pretty sure the caveman didn't have, like, red dye number two and, like, seed oil. Okay, actually, that's, that's food. That's not hair dye. Well, I'm pretty sure they didn't have, the like, the toxic fume, like, hair dye stuff as well. And the emo kid looked almost shocked for a second because I think the emo kid totally forgot about that aspect, which is funny. Bro doesn't wipe his butt, but bro puts in hair dye. Like, dude, priorities, dude. Like... <laughs> The emo kid's like, well, actually, bro, if you start a sentence and you say, well, actually, then you're already probably going to sound like a little bit of a squiddy squid when you say that, dude. That's all I'm going to say. If you start a sentence and you're like, well, actually, hold on, let me adjust my fedora. Like, I don't know. You're just, you're already starting off strong. Like, actually, you're starting off really bad. But he's like, well, so here's the thing. Think about it like this. So... Actually, and he's just like obviously stumbling over his words because Liam kind of owned him here because Liam is just like, bro, if you're not wiping your butt because that's like not caveman -y, then why are you putting hair dye in your hair? Why are you wearing rings? Why are you having nail polish? Why are you wearing clothes? How about you just come to class naked the next day? Like that will totally, that'll totally be super authentic, bro. But uh, yeah, so the email kid's like, well, actually, so if you actually think about it, it's totally not. It's like totally okay. And Liam's like, dude, what do you mean if you actually think about it? Like, I actually thought about it, and I don't see how it's okay. He's like, bro, you haven't done the research like I have, okay? Just get over the fact that you're wrong and I'm right. And Liam's like, okay, bro. And the emo kid's like, you know what? If you don't actually believe me, watch this riz. Watch how whiz-tastic I am. I'm about to whiz up this girl like crazy, dude. And Liam's like, dude, you don't, you don't have to do that. Because look... As much as Liam would find it hilarious to watch the emo kid try and quote-unquote riz up some girl, at the same time, bro, like, he already knows for a fact that it's going to be a train wreck, and it's going to be so much like the cringe is going to radiate, like, radiation poisoning from a nuclear bomb, bro, that, like, it's, already, it's probably going to affect him. Like, Liam is literally probably going to lose, like, 15 years of his life from the cringe radiation, um, just from, like, whatever happens, bro. So he's kind of like, hey, man, you don't actually need to uh, riz anyone up. I trust you. You're Super Sigma or whatever you want to say. You're the top G. You're like W Riz or I don't freaking know, dude. You got that. Uh, you got that stinky Riz or whatever. Like, yeah, good, good for you, bro. Like, 100%. I got you. And the emo kid's like, you know what? I sense a little attitude from your voice. So I'm going to prove you so wrong. So wrong. Look at this Riz. Riz is going to be the secret word of the day. <laughs> Yeah, secret word of the day is a riz. That is R-I-Z-Z. -Z. That'll be the secret word. So go ahead in the comment section of this video and comment that right now. And while you're in the comment section of this video, make sure to check out the pinned comment. As in the pinned comment, there's a link to the Spotify page, which you can listen to the stories as podcasts. As well, in the link in the pinned comment down below, there are two channels I'll be uploading daily on, a Reddit story channel and a meme channel. Please subscribe to both of them as they are small and your support helps so much. Let's get back to the story. So yeah, um, at this point, Liam is really trying to convince the emo kid not to try and quote unquote riz up this girl because he already knows that it is going to be so bad that he might not even survive just witnessing this. Like, let alone everyone else in the class. Like, literally everyone's going to be turned into dust, bro, from this. It's going to be so bad that he's going to get Thanos snapped out of existence because of how uncomfortable and cringe it will be. 
Yeah, so uh, anyways, there's another girl in Liam and the emo kid's class. And remember, this is all going down while the teacher is teaching class. So this is a pretty big class, and the teacher is kind of completely checked out of teaching at this point, so... This is why all this can go down. But there's a girl in the class, and we're going to call this girl Rosie, right? So, uh, I don't know. Rosie was just minding her own business. She was just doing her thing and was not really wanting the emo kid to whiz her up or anything like that, bro. So, yeah, the emo kid's like, dude, Liam, you don't believe me, but I'm going to show you how I'm actually the whizzler, and I'm going to whiz up that girl over there. And Liam's like, what? Like, Rosie? Is that her name? Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to whiz up Rosie then. Dude didn't even know this girl's name, and he was going in cold. Going in for, like, the coldest approach ever. This approach is going to be so cold, it's going to be like, it's going to be like jumping out of the Atlantic and into the, uh, like, the Arctic Oceans, bro. Wait, the Atlantic, the Arctic. I don't know what I'm saying. It's cold. It's, it's not going to work. That's what I'm trying to convey to you guys. So anyways, oh God, this is already so bad, bro. The emo kid... Um, instead of, okay, so Rosie was only, like, two desks that way, but there was a, there was, like, the desks were actually, like, it was a clean shot over to Rosie, so there was probably two desks worth of, worth of space, um, but there was no desks in between the emo kid and Rosie. So instead of, I don't know, getting up out of his seat and walking over to where Rosie is and sitting in the, the empty desk that is literally right next to her, the emo kid instead decides to drag his desk over to Rosie. It is the most painfully awkward, excruciating, and annoying thing you've ever seen or heard. It's like, yeet, yeet, <laughs> like he's dragging his metal desk against the ground. And it is so long, and it is so loud, and it is, it's just like he's dragging his desk against the ground. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> I think the teacher hears it, but just, it just can't, at this point he's like, bro, I'm literally too old for this. I'm way too close to retirement for any of this. I'm going to let whatever happens, happens, bro. That's all I'm trying to say. And eventually the emo kid plops his desk after dragging it for the last 30 seconds right next to Rosie. And he's like, hey, baby, what's... What, 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 ah. He just completely fails his first approach. Like, his, his first sentence, he just mumbles it into the ground. Like, he literally is like, hey, baby, what's... Uh. <laughs> like, bro tried, but bro did not succeed, unfortunately. <laughs> and like at this point Liam is like hearing all this he's like oh good oh god like could I've stopped this could I've stopped this atrocity so Liam is watching Rosie's expression the look on her face so the emo kid starts talking to her again and Liam starts to realize that this is about to go so so bad and you might be thinking, oh, it's probably about to go so bad because, I don't know, uh, the emo kid's riz is going to be very bad. Which, yeah, he's definitely not going to be good at talking to this girl, obviously. But here's the actual main issue. Liam is watching Rosie's expression. And she, like, crinkles up her nose. And you can just tell that she is thinking to herself, oh my god, what's that smell? Like, she... <laughs> That was a little overdramatic. <laughs> no, but you could already, you could you could obviously tell that she is like literally on the verge of tears. She's literally about to puke everywhere, just like projectile vomit, water, liquid, blood, internal organs, literally the, uh, another dimension coming out of her throat. Like it's about to be so unbelievably bad. You can tell by her face that she is barely holding it together because the emo kid is like giving like, he's giving, he's talking so much right now, which means a constant stream of uh, deadly virus breath is coming out of, of his mouth at like a crazy rate. As well, just probably the smell from his underpants at this point, because remember, he never wipes, he never changes. So, <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, uh, Liam is watching as uh, he's like, oh my god, is, is Rosie gonna like be able to take this? Because here's the thing, Liam didn't know this, but Rosie already had a sense of stomach. At the su uh, she would she w had a proclivity to vomit. She was more likely to gag and to puke. She was had a very sensitive stomach, I should say. She uh she just was. <laughs> and also, the worst thing, smells were like almost just like she if she got a whiff of something bad, it would be extremely difficult for her to hold it together. So just the fact that she's in the presence of the emo kid is a not it's not a whiff. It is a literal full force. Air, like air, ground, every single type of assault. It is a full force assault on all of her senses simultaneously, absolutely destroying every single one. Yeah, so at this point, 
Uh, Liam is not even paying attention to whatever quote-unquote Riz the emo kid is using because he knows it doesn't matter because his scent is literally a ticking time bomb. Yeah, so uh, anyways, it happens. Rosie literally puts her hand up to her mouth and goes, oh, and gets up, stumbles out of her desk, runs over to the nearest trash can, and then goes, Whoa! literally pukes into the freaking trash can. Okay, so the teacher has ignored everything up to this point, but, I mean, your student runs to the trash can and projectile vomits into it. Okay, bro, you're probably gonna start paying attention. So the entire class is like, whoa. But here's the thing, most people don't know it's because the emo kid was being the big stink. Um, that that's the reason why this all happened. So the teacher's like, oh, Rosie, like, are you, are you not feeling good? Like, you can go to the front office. And she's like, yeah, yeah I have to go. So Rosie literally brings the trash can with her and uh, runs up to the front office to go to, like, the medical center or whatever. <laughs> or literally just to get away from the emo kid who even knows. So the emo kid drags his desk back next to uh, the subscriber, Liam, and is like, okay, well, so I was just whizzing way too hard and she couldn't handle it. And Liam's like, dude, do you maybe think uh, the reason why she projectile vomited all over the trash can was because the scents weren't mixing with her well. He's like, no, dude, she was really into my odors. Um, I just whizzed way too hard and she couldn't take it because she was like, whoa, that's so Sigma. That's why she was vomiting, bro. And Liam's like, all right, man, uh, I think you're a lost cause. What's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we got a story time of an emo kid who runs a emo kid mafia at his school. And it's both very hilarious, but also very cringy. So leave a like on the video right now to claim your free nothing. Subscribe to the channel with notifications on if you are new. And with that being said, let's jump into this story. Anyways, right, so we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story, uh, Tom. So anyways, right, in Tom's school, there was a group of emo kids, um, and the, there was a main leader. So, okay, there was an emo kid mafia type thing. I know the sentence that just left my mouth makes absolutely no sense, and trust me, it low-key made absolutely no sense to me too, dude. Anyways, though, so yeah, there was an emo kid mafia at Tom's school. And uh, the, the ringleader, the, uh, the Don of the emo kid mafia, we're going to call this kid Ben. Uh, yeah, so anyways, every single day, right before class, so like kids would get into class, like, I don't know, five minutes early or so, or like the first period class or whatever, the teacher was always like a little bit late for some reason. So right before the teacher got in, the emo kid and his little henchman or whatever would walk down the aisles in class, basically demanding uh, money for protection from everyone else in the class, which is kind of funny. Like, bro, they're actually using like the 1960s, like Italian mafia strategy of like, I'm going to give you, like, actually doing a protection racket. Basically, they say, we're going to protect you, and the whole idea was, like, it was implied that the emo kids were going to, like, beat up anyone who, like, doesn't get the protection. So you're basically selling protection against yourself. But the thing that makes this a little bit different from your standard uh, protection racket when it comes with the mafia is uh, if you didn't get the protection from the actual mafia, then you'd actually suffer consequences. But bro, this is a group of nerdy emo kids, dude. Like, I don't know how to say it. And by the way, if you yourself are like an emo kid or you dress emo, I, I honestly don't care. Like, no disrespect to you. Like, we all do whatever. Like, we like what we like. But please don't act like these kids. Don't be cringe. Yeah, but the difference between like, you know, the protection racket of like a 1960s mafia, whatever, and this was, bro, emo kids ain't doing jack. I don't know how else to say it. Like, these kids are literally not going to be doing anything. And if they do, what are they going to do? Like a Naruto spin attack and then just fall over from like exhaustion because all they do all day is like write poems about how evil the world is and watch Death Note. Great series, by the way. And just like stand in hot topic, like loitering, like all they do, like their actual LinkedIn profession is loiter in the hot topic, dude. Yeah, but for some reason... Basically, all the kids... So, in the very beginning, the emo kids, they didn't want to bite off more than they could chew. So, there was a couple of kids who, like, sat at the front of the class, and they were, like, super... I don't know. They were... 
they were like easy targets, if that makes sense, or at least they were as easy a target as it goes in this situation. So in the very beginning, the emo kids were offering protection to these kids and these kids only. They basically went up and they were like, oh, like you're gonna want this or whatever. And the kids started to fold. But day after day, the emo kids began to like expand their operation and the Don behind the whole thing, Ben, they, we'll call him uh, prime minister, we'll call him like head of the emo mafia, right? Which is just such a funny statement, bro. Like, I don't know what schools you guys went to, but uh, yeah, my school never had an emo kid mafia, but maybe, maybe I'm the weird one here, man. I really don't know. Yeah, but anyways, right, every single day they got a little bit more and more courageous, let's say, or at least they got more and more, they felt like they had more power, which in some way they low-key did. Here's the thing, though, which is really important to know. So no one wanted to mess with the emo squad, with, with the emo gang, which to me makes no sense because these are like low-key the least intimidating people ever. Like, I'm not trying to come for them or anything, but I low-key am trying to come for them a little bit. Like, the, these guys were not physically intimidating at all. Like, I actually feel like I, I would laugh in this situation, which, I mean, the subscriber, as you'll see. The thing is, like, everyone, like, bought the protection. First of all, it was like 25 cents a day, so you bring in like a quarter or whatever, which isn't like a lot for one day, but if you do it for weeks on end, bro, you're actually giving them some actual money. And it was a good operation for like the emo, like whatever, right? Here's the thing though, they offered protection, but the thing is, up until this point, no one had ever no one had ever questioned it, meaning that no one had ever been like no, and then actually gotten beaten up by the, like the emo kids. So no one had ever like tested like the, the the consequences of not doing what the emo kid mafia said. Which honestly, people should have done that a little bit sooner, and then they probably would have figured out how much of an absolute scam this all is. I mean, it was a scam the whole time, but it's protection from what these guys. Lol. Anyways, though. So yeah, uh, the operations continued to expand, and eventually, the email kids made it to the back of the class, one day. And that's where the subscriber Tom and his boys sat. So Tom was like the closest to the front of the- or he was in the back, but he was like the closest to the front in the back. I don't know if that makes any sense. But basically, he was the first ones, because he would notice that the emo kids were getting closer and closer to where he and his boys sat for the longest time. And Tom's like, no way they actually come over here thinking that I'm going to, like, be like, oh, yes, please. I don't want to be beat up by some, I don't know, five foot two, 300 pound guy who wears Hot Topic shirts and his hair is down to his legs, like, all black and has makeup on and is, like, writes poetry all day inspired by Edgar Allan Poe. Like, dude, I, I don't care, bro. Like, honestly, dude, like, I, like, fighting you, like, dude, I wouldn't even have to show up to the fight and somehow you'd still lose somehow. Anyways, though, so yeah, sure enough, the subscriber has been watching as these kids are getting, they're basically getting closer and closer to the back of the room where he was. And he's this kind of thing to himself, like, there's no shot that these kids are actually going to, there's no shot these kids are actually going to push their luck more than they already have, which they have completely push their luck like way beyond any place where they should have there's no way that they're actually going to come all the way to the back of the room well turns out on this day they came to the back of the room dude they came to the back of the room so yeah the emo kid kind of like walks up to tom for the first time and is like hey i just want to let you know that we're offering protection services i highly suggest you get them tom's like no i think i'll pass and at this point, like, the emo kid, like, at this point, there's been, like, one or two people who've said I've passed. So the default response is, like, dude, trust me, like, I don't want to, like, uh, threaten you or anything. But, like, you know, we don't, we don't, like, I've, I've heard that, like, people who don't get the protection uh, end up smashed into lockers. And when Tom heard this, he said, by who? You guys? Like, nah, I think I'll take my luck, man. Next. And at this point, the few people before who like were questioning the protection services after the emo kids said that line they were like okay fine whatever like they eventually like caved to that point but tom was like dude like are you serious right now you guys are scared of these squids bro like what the like what like are you serious right now yeah so anyways right he says no and the emo kid, this isn't Ben, this isn't like the Don of the, of the emo kid mafia, this is one of the henchmen, which bro, I, it's like, first of all, it's mad embarrassing that you're in an emo kid mafia, but at least Ben is in charge of the emo kid mafia, like you're, at least you're in charge of something embarrassing, I don't, I can't think of something more, the only thing more embarrassing than being in charge of the emo kid mafia is being 
well, is, is being a henchman to the emo kid mafia. Like, the only thing more embarrassing than being in charge of it is being a henchman to it, bro, like, I swear. Anyways, though, so the, the henchman at this point had never, like, you know that line where it's, like, Plankton, like, steals the Krabby Patty secret formula, and then it's, like, what do you do next? And that's where his plan fails. He's like, oh, actually, I don't know. I never thought I'd get this far. Kind of the same situation where the emo kids never thought that anyone would actually question their authority. Like, they never thought that, you know, oh, my God, like, no. Like, after the follow-up line. So basically, the henchman's like, oh, dude, you really should. Almost, like, begging at this point. And Tom's like, no, like, me and also all my friends, I can speak for them. Don't even try with them. You're going to get the same answer. In fact, with some of them, you'll probably get a... Uh, a, a a a tender fist to your face man i'm i'm just going to be straight up like i i'm the nice one here man i'm the nice one here which loki was true like tom was the most cordial of all of his friend group like uh, some of tom's friend group would actually respond with like a boot to the face bro like i hey, tom was actually doing them a favor by saying yo like talk to me don't talk to them dude so yeah the henchman's like um okay you might want to reconsider but i'm going to go talk to the head of i'm going to go talk to the uh our leader which, like, bro, what? Anyways, so yeah, uh, eventually the emo kid turns away and walks towards to try and find Ben. Yeah, so anyways, right, uh, sure enough, the subscriber Tom is kind of just sitting there and is kind of like, dude, like, okay. And so Ben, the emo kid, the don of the emo kid, the head of the emo kid mafia. And, and Ben has Ben. okay, let me describe Ben to you for a second. Okay, I'm not coming for anyone. Like, I'm not trying to come for this kid. I'm just trying to accurately describe him. Like, when this story was submitted to me, like, this is just an accurate description. So, Ben is five foot one. which, by the way, shout out to Short Kings. It's not... I'm not trying to come for you guys. I'm just trying to, like, explain how not intimidating this guy is. Five foot one, like, pretty overweight, uh, hunched over... He has long black hair, but you know that haircut where one, one, it's like the Skrillex 2013 haircut where one side of his head is shaved and the other side is long and it's all flipped over on one side. Bro is also wearing like black mascara and like a, a nose piercing, which isn't even a real nose piercing. It's like one of those clip on ones, which I'm not trying to shade you if you have a clip on one. In fact, it's probably it might be a better idea, dude. But like, I'm just trying to describe this kid accurately so you understand that even though he's the head of the emo kid mafia, whatever, he's not actually that scary. And also, Tom is, like, 5'10", like, relatively built. Uh, he's, like, a football player. All of his friends are football players. Like, dude, I'm just, I'm not coming for anyone. Look, I'm not some, like, crazy dude who can bench 10,000 pounds and super intimidating. Like, I get it. Like, I am somewhat built like the Minecraft skeleton. Don't get me wrong. But all I'm trying to say is I'm not going around to, like, the football team saying, you should be afraid that I'm going to beat you up, so you better pay me 25 cents a day. Yeah, so anyways, right, sure enough, the, uh, the, the, the kind of, like, the minion emo kid went to go find Ben, the kingpin... The master lord, the one, the number one emo kid, right? So eventually, Ben, as I described him earlier, walks, uh, shuffles over, rolls, I don't know. <laughs> he, he comes over, but it's not like a powerful stride. It's like the least intimidating kind of funny walk ever, and I don't really know how else to describe it besides that. Anyway, so Ben is like, so I've heard that you don't want to, uh, you don't want our very nicely priced and generous protection services and uh yeah tom's like yep that is correct you heard me correctly and he's like well, well oh i i beg you reconsider i mean it's just such a good deal and honestly the consequences of not taking the protection services might might be more than you expect and he's like okay yeah no i'm i'm, I'm down for that yay consequences woo <laughs> At this point, Ben's like, okay, well, it, it seems as if, like, you were uh, making a big mistake. I'm just saying it. Last chance. I'm going to count to three. And after three, I'm sorry, but you just can't buy the protection services anymore. One. And Tom's just thinking to himself, dude, like, you really think that counting down to three is going to somehow magically make me go, no, please, artificial scarcity is, it's, it's kicking in. I need this now. It's like, bro, come on now. This is, like, the most, like, mom tactic ever. Like, count down to three and it's going to work. Yeah, sure, man, it's going to work on your six-year-old, but it definitely is not going to work on some kid who doesn't even want this nor care about you in the first place. Anyway, so, so he's like, two, two and a half, 
Dude is actually going to count, like, he's going to have some kind of sequence that approaches three but never actually hits it unless you do it an infinite number of times. He's going to be like, two and three-fourths, two and four-fifths, two and five-sixths. Like, bro's going to keep counting forever at this point. Yeah, so anyways, right, eventually, uh, Tom just looking at him with this look of just complete disinterest. So that's when one of the emo kid, like, uh, minion-type people, like, is noticing what's going on. He's like, hey, boss. Do you want me to paint them up for you? And Tom looks at him and says, yes, I would like to see that. And here's the thing, though. Ben, like, even though he's, like, in charge of, like, the emo kid gang or whatever, so all of a sudden, or the emo kid mafia or whatever, like, either, like, at this point, we all know that uh, Ben is not the brightest out of everyone, but he is the brightest out of the emo kid, like, out of the whole emo kid mafia. He is... Compared to them, the brightest out of all of them. Which, I mean, if you choose to be a minion for the emo kid mafia, then you might actually have the same intelligence as a box of staples. But uh, anyways, so Ben is like, no, it's it's fine. He's, he's one of us. I think Ben here was trying to, like, not allow an altercation because, one, he knew the emo kid wouldn't do anything. And then Ben would kind of... Sh no, sorry, not Ben. Well, Ben knew that the emo kid wouldn't be able to do anything. And even if the emo kid did try and swing, it would be so embarrassing that just, like, people would pay attention to, like, the fight or whatever and realize that they're buying protection against literally nothing. Um, so Ben is like, oh, yeah, he's one of us. And then Tom's like, nope, not one of you guys. Just don't feel like paying for your protection because you guys are just not intimidating. And uh, Ben's like, oh, well, yeah, same thing. And Tom's like, nope. Not same thing. And the emo minion's like, 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 my lord, like, you don't want me to fight him? Which, by the way, just, like, referring to someone as my lord is pretty funny. It's like, my lord, Sidious, like, do you want me to fight him? Like, and uh, Ben's like, no, no, he's, as I said, one of us. And Tom's like, once again, reiterating, not one of you guys, just don't care. And the, like, the, the, the emo minion's like, like, I, I think we must fight him, right? Right? And Ben is really like, no, 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 no. Anyways, go collect the rest of the money from everyone else. So at this point, uh, Tom's, like, kind of gets an idea in his head. He's like, actually, no. Like, I'm going to make sure that you don't collect money from anyone else as well. And at this point, Ben's like, what? Yeah, so anyways, Ben's like, okay, like, I was accepting your disrespect when you just said that you didn't want to. But now you're going after my whole business model. This is now completely unacceptable, and I'm not going to let you do this. So at this point, Tom's like, okay. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Tom has literally just said, okay, every single time. Like, Tom is, like, repeatedly calling the emo kids bluff and repeatedly, like, winning, bro. So at this point, the emo kid's like, oh, fine, you know what? Then it shall happen. After school today, we shall have a duel. And Tom's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, once again, like, Tom is just repeatedly calling the bluff. And the emo kid... I think the emo kid was, like, expecting Tom to, like, kind of weasel out of it a little bit and be like, oh, okay, no, I'll let you guys take all the money from everyone else. But Tom is literally just repeatedly calling these kids bluff. Like, Tom, I think, has said okay to, like, every single statement. Besides the one saying, give me money, he's like, no. And then they're like, we're going to fight you then. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm going to fight you. Okay. You don't want you, you want to buy this? No. Are you sure? Yes. Well, we're going to fight you then. Okay. Like, T Tom is literally just so not intimidated by this. And so anyways, he's like, yeah, okay. After school, sure. Cool. And the emo kid's like, um, uh, are you sure? I mean, all you need to do is just, like, let us continue our very fine business operations. And I, I'd have no reason to fight you then. I really don't want to hurt you, Tom. And Tom, at this point, almost took that personally. He's like, no, okay. Yeah, show up to the business or, like, show up to the fight. And either way, I'm going to make sure you guys can't collect any more money. And they're like, um, and how are you going to do that? So then Tom very loudly yells, hey, everyone, I'm offering protection services f against the emo kids. Uh, but instead of paying me 25 cents a day, it's literally just free. And the emo kids are like, um, because at this point, think about it. Like the emo kids are like offering protection against them for 25 cents but then tom who's like a lot more physically intimidating and all of his friends are offering protection against the emo kids for free like bro you're definitely taking the for free package and the emo kids are like no he's lying he can't protect you guys uh, we're too strong and powerful and tom's like 
no, you're not. <laughs> They're like, fine. And Ben's like, fine. We will have a duel after school today. If I win, then everyone must continue to buy the protection services. But if you win, then they can consider having your protection services. Tom's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude's literally just saying okay to literally everything. Real quick, though, before we jump into the fight scene, which is pretty funny, uh, comment emo down below. That will be the secret word of the day today. So go ahead in the comment section and comment emo. If you're listening to this on YouTube, make sure you have left a like on the video uh, to claim your free nothing and cringe goggles, as well as you are sub check to make sure you are subscribed to the channel with notifications on. And if you're listening to this on Spotify, which by the way, you two people, I'm also on Spotify, link in the description, or you can just look up Connor Pugs. Honestly, I'm probably the only guy on there. Make sure that you follow the podcast and also rate it at five stars and go ahead and answer the Q&A poll question, whatever that pops up. And finally, I just want to say the best way to support the channel is sitting down and binge watching a bunch of videos on YouTube or Spotify or both. Just like sitting down and watching a bunch of videos or watching like one of my long compilation videos really helps out the channel. So please comment down below like if you are binge watching the videos and also what do you do while watching a bunch of my videos in a row? Are you trying to go to sleep? Um, are you like... I don't know, drawing, I, I'm, I'm playing video games, I'm genuinely curious, so please comment down below so I can know. And with that being said, let's go to the epic emo kid battle scene. Yeah, so anyways, right, eventually the teacher comes in, so they all sit down. And so Tom is like, you know, he's actually kind of getting excited about the quote-unquote fight after school because one, he's not intimidated, but two, it also means an end to those really annoying emo kids, gang, squad, whatever type thing, right? Because while he wasn't actually like immediately impacted, like he wasn't paying them money because he's not paying them, he's just not paying the money, bro, like come on now. However, it was really annoying every day to see them get away with this. And honestly, Tom's like, I probably should have done something about this earlier, but I mean, it's also not his problem at the end of the day. But yeah, so basically, right, the uh, Tom, Tom, sorry, Tom goes to the rest of his classes and eventually the school bell rings. So as was instructed, Tom went to the kind of like the playground courtyard area in the back of the school or whatever. And a ton of when he like opens the door to go there, there's already like a massive crowd. Because apparently the emo kids were, like, the emo kid gang or whatever was not limited to only, like, Tom's first period class. Apparently the, it was, like, every, like, not every single class or every single student, but a lot more people than just his class. So word of the fight kind of spread. So obviously the people who've been paying the emo kids 25 cents a day are definitely very invested in how this fight goes. But then also... Yeah, bro, if there's a school fight and it's, like, publicized, like, some people are just going to go for a good show. It's like, I don't have to pay anything for the pay-per-view, bro. Like, this is free viewing of, like, a, a YouTube, basically, like, who's going to be on the undercard, like, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, a lot of people were pulling up to this, and it was a really massive crowd. So Tom's like, okay, sweet. I get to absolutely destroy these kids, and uh, everyone's going to see it, too. So anyways, about 10 minutes go by. And Tom is kind of like, okay, where are these kids at? Is very clearly said right after school. Maybe, you know, I put stuff in the backpack. Maybe he's getting ready. But 10 minutes, man, like, come on now. I was even five minutes late. So it's 15 minutes after school. I do eventually have to go home and do homework and stuff. So I can't be waiting around forever. So uh, basically the doors open up 20 minutes late or 20 minutes after school. So after another five minutes goes by. And it wasn't just Ben, the emo kid. It was him and 10 other henchmen. So at this point, Tom's like, yo, like, is it, is, am I just fighting you? And Ben's like, no, we are the emo collective. We all 10 of us, we act as one. And Tom's like, dude, so you're too scared to fight me one-on-one. -on -one, so you brought all your little henchmen to just like fight me all at once. And the, it, Ben is like, yes, now prepare to suffer. So people in the crowd were, like, booing and whistling, like, screaming out, like, that's not fair, like, we came for a one-on-one. -on -one. And Ben's like, he says that he'll offer you protection, but can he offer you protection against ten of us at once? I don't think so. And Tom is kind of like, okay, like, yeah, like, uh, sure, whatever. <laughs> He's like, okay, because remember, these kids are really not intimidating. However, the thing is, Tom was Tom was bluffing a little bit because he was actually a little bit nervous because, yeah, they were all kind of built like little babies or whatever um, with, like, emo hair. However, there was 10 of them. 
So it's almost like that question of like, okay, man, how many babies do you think you could beat up? Like, yeah, if only one baby came to fight you, like you're probably winning. But what if a thousand babies came? Like, yeah, like one on one, they aren't really doing anything, even 10 on one, but a thousand to one babies, bro. Like you might not be winning that kind of the same situation here. It's like, yeah, one, two, three, maybe even four emo kids would have been no problem. But 10 is really going to be a question mark. So anyways, Ben is like, all right. Prepare for battle, my wizard friends, or whatever. I don't know. He said something cringe like that. He's like, uh, they were, like, revving up. And it was like, dude, they were like, okay. <laughs> this is, like, the funniest thing I'm about to describe to you. Okay, so six emo kids in the back started spinning around in circles really quickly. It's like they were trying to summon some, like, tornado god or something, bro. Like, it was actually the cringiest thing you've ever seen. So a bunch of them start spitting around in circles. And Ben, who's like in the front and center, is like, Torna emo tornado attack, commence! So the, like, the, the six in the back that are spinning around in circles start like moving towards Ben. However, the emo kids are so unbelievably coordinated that the six that are spinning around in circles collide with the three that are standing. So Ben is like standing to the side as if he's like a conductor, like conducting the orchestra but the six spinning around in circles collide with the three emo kids who are just like awkwardly standing there and then all the <laughs> dude they all collide into each other so the spinning ones knock into each other and basically by the end of like 30 seconds every single emo kid is on the ground like moaning from pain and they're all down they all tiki out they all tiki out each other like they're all done and ben, ben is the emo kid head literally is standing there his like mouth is slack bro his jaw is slacked he's in complete shock because yeah he literally came in with an army of nine other emo kids and within 30 seconds they've all knocked each other down like a bunch of bowling pins bro so anyways like everyone in the crowd starts laughing and like ben is like no like this can't be he's like fine I shall finish him off. So Ben like run so Ben like puts both of his arms back in like the Sonic Dash Naruto Dash or whatever type position. And he starts spinning to he starts running towards be like uh sorry Tom like in a, like a Sonic Dash towards him with his like arms back or whatever or like the Naruto I don't know what it's called, right? And the thing is though he was like charging at him head first, but because he was charging at him head first, he was doing so in a way that his head was literally face down, meaning the only thing he could see was the dirt in front of him. So he was as he like saw where Ben was standing, like Tom was standing, sorry. Ben saw where Tom was standing, then put his head down, threw his arms back, and like Sonic Dash sprinted towards where Ben, uh, Tom was. However, Tom's like, ain't no way, bro. He literally sidesteps like one foot to the side, Ben, like, runs right past him full speed and runs straight into a bush and then just, like, collapses. So, yeah, uh, Tom didn't even have to... Tom literally stood there and knocked out nine of the emo kids and then took one step to the left and <laughs> knocked out the final one. So everyone starts cheering because, like, no one was rooting for the emo kids, bro. No one was rooting for the emo kids. And so Tom's like, all right, man, I just want to remind you guys that my protection services are totally free. Don't get, like, scammed by these kids anymore. Don't give them any money. And if any of them come to you with a problem, well, I guess I'll just stand there and they'll, you know, beat themselves up by, by the looks of it. So anyways, from that point on, actually the next day, the emo kids, like, the whole plan was to pretend like nothing happened, but literally not a single person gave them money after that thing. Like, literally not a single person gave them money after that whole thing went down. So, uh, yeah, sure enough, uh, the emo kid cult event eventually kind of, like, dissolved, and, uh, they were never heard from again. I mean, they all went to that school, but they never, like, addressed themselves as the emo kid cult. And for as long as Tom will be there, there will probably never be another problem with the emo kid cult ever again. Maybe. How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a good day. Uh, today, we got some crazy emo kid stories that I know for a fact you will enjoy. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And let's call the first subscriber who submitted this story, Hank. 
By the way, all these episodes are on Spotify, and they normally come out a couple hours early on Spotify, so make sure to check that out. First link in the description. Anyways, back to the story. So we're going to call the first subscriber who submitted the story, Hank. And anyways, this all happened when Hank was shopping at the mall. So Hank used to always go to the mall to shop with his friends. You know, it was just a fun place to hang out. They didn't really have a lot of other places that they could go uh, in the town that they lived in, so the mall was probably their best bet. And uh, sure enough, one of these days, one of Hank's friends wanted to shop at this place called Hot Topic. If you don't know, Hot Topic's a place where they have a lot of uh, t-shirts and other kind of apparel that is very, uh, I don't know, like fast fashion-y brand centric. Like it's very much like you, you'll have a lot of different uh, brands or kind of like you'll find a lot of band t-shirts, a lot of kind of like... Okay, so a lot of different stuffs at Hot Topic, but one kind of theme of clothing that you'll see at Hot Topic is uh, emo style clothing, if that makes sense. So like really black clothing, edgy clothing, stuff like that. And just so you know, like I have nothing against it. If you dress like that, I think it's a cool enough style. I think you're fine if you, even if you identify as like, oh, I'm, I'm emo in the way I dress or act or whatever. I don't really care, live your life. However, as long as you don't act, as long as you don't act like the kids in these videos, especially this one, you're chill with me. But anyways, Hank just was like, okay, man, like you want to go to Hot Topic, that's fine. Hank hadn't really been in that much, so he didn't really know what to expect. So Hank was walking into the, you know, the Hot Topic and he was looking around and there's a whole host of people. And Hank's friend was like, all right, man, like I'm going to go, like, I'm going to go to the back of the room. I know what I want. I'm going to go in their skateboard section. You can kind of just wander around here. I'll be out when I'm done. So Hank was totally fine with this. And Hank kind of like was wandering around. And he walked over to one of the t-shirt aisles or one of the t-shirt rack aisles. And that's when he accidentally bumped into this kid. And this kid turns around. And just to paint the picture, this kid has super long black hair. He's got like black mascara on, black lipstick. He's got black painted nails. He's got a spiky collar. He's got like a black band t-shirt. He's got like long black jeans and then those like big black stomper boots. I don't know if you know what I know, like if you know what I mean, but like those big, kind of like those big rubber black boots that are pretty popular right now. And he turns around and he's like, dude, what the heck, bro? And Hank's just like, all right, my fault. Like, I didn't mean to bump into you like that. I was just looking around and wasn't paying attention. And the emo kid's like, dude, you're like, like, shut up, bro. Hank's kind of just looking at him like, uh, like, I, I don't really know what you mean. Like, I didn't do anything. Like, are, are you good? And the emo kid's like, bro, like, I don't need to, I don't need to hear that sass from you, bro. Like, I really just don't need to hear that. And uh, Hank says once again, like, dude, I... I don't know what you're saying. Like, I'm sorry. I'll just go the other way. And Hank kind of turns around to de-escalate because he doesn't feel like, you know, escalating anything. It's just not a good idea to get into fights like that. And that's when the emo kid's like, like, yeah, you would run. You're dressed like one of those jocks anyways. Which, like, Hank kind of turned around because he didn't know what that even means. First of all, I mean, isn't jock a positive thing? Like, I get that there's a bit of a neg like, negative connotation of, like, oh, you're a dumb jock or something. But I would have thought that, like, jock would have meant, like, oh, you're an athlete, which isn't, is, isn't that a good thing? Like, I'm, I'm kind of confused right now. Is that not a good thing, you know? And Hank, uh, you know, kind of turns back. And he's like, dude, like, what, why? Like, why are you, like, making a problem with me? I don't have a problem with you. I, like, you're kind of the one that's making this into something. Because Hank really did believe, like, I'm not, I'm not the one doing anything. It's like 100% this guy who's making it something, you know? And, uh, you know, the kid's just like, well, you know, like, you're just looking like a dumb jock. Oh, uh -huh. isn't that right, guys? And he turns around, and there's two other emo kids. And they look very similar to the main emo kid, but they kind of just, you know, they're dressed slightly different, but really... I mean, it's funny how, like, non... I, I saw this on South Park, but it's funny how, like, non-conformists all dress the same. <laughs> I'm just like, well, I mean, you are conforming to something, but anyways, right? So the other two kids, the other emo kids are kind of there along, too, laughing. And, you know, you know, Hank is starting to, like, get upset by this because he doesn't really care about, like, these random kids, what they think, except, you know, he's got three kids standing there pointing at him, laughing in his face when Hank didn't deserve it. Like, Hank was, you know, Hank was thinking, like, look, if I deserve this, if I was being, like, an absolute, like, you know, if I was being a jerk to them or I, or for some reason I actually did something, sure, maybe I deserve this. But Hank's just thinking to himself, like, dude, I don't deserve this. I was literally just chilling here. I actually bumped into this kid. Like, I'm sorry about that. Like, my fault, once again, my fault. 
But that's when Hank turned the tables on the emo kid. And the thing is, right, the emo kid was wearing a band t-shirt. And the thing about band t-shirts is, you know, it, you don't, okay, you don't necessarily need to know everything about some place that you rep. Like if you wear a t-shirt that's from Starbucks and someone's like, okay, well then name all the flavors of like ca cappuccino you can get. It doesn't have to be like that. But the thing is, a lot of people wear band t-shirts because the band t-shirts look sick and uh, they don't know any of the songs from the band, which, you know, I guess is fine. But like at the end of the day, a lot of people will kind of pretend to know it and not actually know it. So, you know, Hank was like, well, screw it, bro. He's like, all right, buddy. And he looks at the main emo kid, and the main emo kid looks at him back. And he's like, all right, buddy, name me three songs from that band. And he points to the emo kid's t-shirt. And I don't know, maybe it was like Nirvana or something. Like one of those kind of like t-shirts or whatever, which, uh, and the emo kid looks at him, and he has this kind of look of shock. This look of, oh my God, like you caught me. Kind of the look of like, man got caught in a trap right here type of look. And the emo kid's kind of like, um, um... How about you name me three songs from this band, bro? And, he turn, and the emo kid turns to look back at his emo kid's friends as kind of like, oh, what's their reaction to that sick burn? And they kind of just look at him blankly. I think the emo kid was kind of expecting. He would turn around, he'd look back to his friends, and he'd be like, oh, yeah, wasn't, wasn't that a crazy burn? I totally got them. But his friends look back at him kind of just like, ah, dude, like, I don't know how to break it to you, but... You didn't get him. So the emo kid turns back around. He's like, oh, I don't need to tell, like, I don't need to do anything you say, bro. I'm not going to conform to your standards. And then the two emo kids were like, yeah, that's right on, bro. You're so right. And they like dap him up. And Hank at this point is, he's just so done. He's just like, bro, because he realizes like Hank's like, you know what? I'm not going to fight with these kids. These kids are obviously a lost cause. This is not worth my time. So Hank gets up, he turns around, and he kind of says, like, whatever, man, like, go live your life. Hank turns around, starts to walk away, and that's when he feels a tug on his pants. And he turns around, and he sees the emo kid failing to pull down his pants. So basically, the emo kid couldn't, like, you know, wanted to, like, he couldn't let Hank just leave by himself. Like, he couldn't let him just do that. He So when Hank turned around and started to walk away, the emo kid, like, went to jump and try and pull down his pants to, like, pants him, to embarrass him, to, like, impress his emo kid friends and be like, oh, my God, I totally owned him, dude. So at this point, like, Hank is like, dude, stop pulling down my pants, bro. And the emo kid's like, oh, sorry, I just slipped. And he's like, uh, uh. And his emo kid friends laugh along as well. At this point, Hank's getting really annoying. He's like, sorry, bro, like, I'm not into you like that. And he's like, what? He's like, yeah, you're trying to pull down my pants, so you're, not, you're telling me you're not trying to get a peek? And the emo kid's like, dude, it's not like that. I was trying to pants you. And, and, and Hank's like, yeah, you wanted to pants me so you could see my, my bare bottom. Did you really want to see my bare bottom that bad? And at this point, the, the other two emo kids start laughing a little bit. And the, emo, the main emo kid turns around and he's like, stop laughing, it's not funny. He turns back around, he's like, dude, you don't know what you just did. And the emo kid walks up to the uh, walks up to Hank with his chest puffed out. He's like, "Bro, you literally don't know what you just did. You don't know who you're messing with." Okay, I don't know if he started to tear up or anything, but the, at the exact same time, the mall cop that happened to be like going around the mall to make sure that nothing's what well, like happening looks into the hot topic and sees basically this kid walk up to this other kid with his chest puffed out. So the mall cop outside kind of slows down walking and looks inside. And sure enough, right, you know, Hank is like, hey, look, I'm not looking for any trouble. And the emo kid's like, yeah, that's what I thought. You're freaking scared, bro. Don't tell me otherwise. You're freaking scared. And at this point, Hank's like, dude, I'm not scared. It's not like that. I just, like, I just don't want any trouble. Like, you're not worth my time. And he's like, I am worth your time. I'm worth all of your time plus some because I'm worth more than you, dude. You don't know who you're messing with. At this point, right, the emo kids was really kind of just showing his true colors and being like, I mean, kid's insecure. That's fair enough. He's trying to act all tough in front of his friends. So once again, Hank's like, you know, he turns around and he's like, all right, man. He's like, dude, I'm just not doing this. Once again, have a good life. Hank turns around, and as Hank's turning around, the emo kid is like, in his head, he's like, I can't let this slide. So the emo kid literally raises up his hand and swings on Hank. 
Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, go ahead and comment emo down below. I just want to see how many people made it, to the, made it to the end of this video, as I do appreciate you guys. Best way to support the channel, as always, is just watch a bunch of the videos. The more watch time you give to the channel, the more we get promoted in the algorithm, and I really, really do appreciate it. Let me know in the comment section what you do while watching my videos. I genuinely want to know. Just so you know, all these episodes are on Spotify. It's in the description, the first link. Please rate us five stars when you have a chance. If you want to submit these stories, and please do, because, you know, that's how I make these videos, go to my Instagram or Twitter. They're both in the, in the description, but they're also at Connor Pugs. I got a Discord server, link in the description, code Connor Pugs for 10% off gamer subs. Let's get back to the story. So Hank, remember, he turns around, and Hank's like, dude, I'm not going to deal with you like that. It's not worth my time. So Hank turns around, and the emo kid, who's like, I can't, I can't let Hank, like, one-up me. Like, I can't let this random kid like, you know, kind of, like, alpha me in front of my emo kid friends or whatever. So Hank turns around, so as Hank turns around, the emo kid swings on him, takes his fist. <laughs> the thing is, though, the emo kid's not, like, a, a trained, uh, I don't know, fighter or boxer or something. So obviously the emo kid doesn't make contact with Hank. Instead of making contact with Hank, the emo kid nearly misses Hank, and his, like, right hook goes right through a rack of clothes. The emo kid was also... Emo Kid was really putting his full force into this, too. Because once the Emo Kid misses and whiffs on Hank, the Emo Kid flies forward into the rack of clothes. So he basically, like, pushes himself into a rack of clothes, fails to swing on him. The mall cop, however, did see the Emo Kid try and swing on Hank, so he walks in there. Hank turns around, and he sees the Emo Kid on the floor in a pile of clothes, and he's just so confused on what happened. And then, the, you know, uh, Hank turns around the other way to see a mall cop standing in front of him. So Hank's really confused at this moment. He's like, okay, one second ago, the, I turned away from the emo kid. And a second later, the emo kid is sitting, like, face first in a pile of clothes. And a mall cop is standing above me. Like, this literally makes no sense. And sure enough, you know, the mall cop's like, hey, you know, hold up, everyone. I got to talk to you guys. And the two emo kids, like, from the back, like, they, they get scared and they literally run off. They disappear into the rest of the story. He's like, hey, you get, get back here. But also the mall cop didn't really care that much because the, the two people that he really wanted to talk to were both Hank and the emo kid who swung on him. So the emo kid gets up. He's, like, kind of panting a little bit. He's like, <sighs> and the mall cop's like, hey, like, hey, I saw you swing on this kid. I know you didn't make contact but you did try and swing on this kid is 100%. Like, I, I, what's going on here? The emo kid's like, dude, I was just defending myself. And at this point, you know, Hank's like, that's not the case. Like, this like this kid and I were kind of talking back and forth. He tried to pull down my pants. I made fun of him for doing that. I turned around. And he tried to swing on me. At this point, right, you know, the mall cop kind of witnessed the last the last 60% of this altercation. So he knows for a fact that he saw the emo kid try and pull down the pants and then have an argument. So the emo kid says, well, after I pulled down his pants, uh, this kid tried to swing on me and I just defended myself. And the thing is, right, that was a mistake for the emo kid because the mall cop had been watching the whole thing. So the mall cop knew for a fact that that wasn't the case of what happened. So he went, so the mall cop goes on to say like, dude, I know for a fact that's not what happened. I saw you guys kind of like, bickering in the store and I wanted to make sure that we had no like nonsense going on. Obviously some nonsense did go on and I, you know, I watched the whole thing. I saw you pull down, try and pull down this kid's pants. He did not swing on you. I don't know what he said to you that offended you or anything, but it's very clearly that, you know, you're the aggressor here and like, you know, I, I can't have that. So he's like, Hey, I'm going to need you to come with me. And the emo kid's like, all right, like, all right, buddy, go ahead with him. And the emo kid is like looking at Hank and kind of giving him this look of like, come on, bud, like, go, go ahead. He's asking for you. When in truth, that, you know, the mall cop is not asking for Hank. The mall cop is asking for the emo kid. So the mall cop's like, sorry, man, you must be mistaken. I'm not asking for this guy over here pointing to Hank. He's like, I'm asking for you. And he points at the emo kid. And the emo kid is so absolutely stunned by this revelation. He's like, at this point, the emo kid is practically speechless. The emo kid is standing there is just like, you, you must have some kind of, you must have some kind of mistake or something. Like, you can't be talking about me. Uh, th th that's insane. Like, there, there's no way. Like, uh, what, what, what do you mean? Hanks is looking at the emo kid with this bit of a smirk. And the, hall, mall, hall, the mall cop is kind of like, come on, bud. Like, we don't want to have any trouble here. Make this nice and easy for all of us. 
and just come along with me. And, you know, at this point, the emo kid is looking at Hank and kind of just giving him this look of, like, this isn't over, buddy. This isn't over. And Hank is kind of just like, wow, this, like, a lot just went down the last five minutes, you know? Because this was, like, no longer than, like, ten minutes of an altercation. And as soon as the mall cop basically drags the emo kid away, his friend comes rushing up to him. And he's like, dude, dude, like, I just checked out the thing I was getting. And in his hand, he had this, like, skateboard thing or whatever. He's like, dude, I just saw, like, a mall cop over here. I saw some kid getting dragged out of the store. Did you happen to see what happened? And Hank just looks at his friend. Is like, did I happen to see what happened? He's like, buddy, I lived what happened. Okay, so the, we're going to call the subscriber for the next story Bobby. I got a little uh, King the Hill theme going on with these names because I got Bobby and Hank. If you know, you know, and you're cool. Anyway, so Bobby was like hanging out at home one day and one of his friends hits him up. And, you know, Bobby, you know, doesn't see this friend this often because they happen to be going to two different schools, even though they live relatively in the same area. They're both in high school and they're both seniors in high school. So Bobby's friend, who we're going to call Ben, actually happens to have a car at this point. And, you know, Bobby's friend Ben hits up Bobby one day and Bobby's just chilling at home and he gets a text from Ben saying, hey, do you want to like hang out today? And Bobby is feeling kind of lazy. So he's like, ah, maybe like, what, what do you want to do? His friend's like, dude, I want to go to the skate park. And Bobby in his head, he's like, I don't know if I want to go, like, this is, I, I don't know, I don't know, man, I really don't know, and Bobby should have stayed home that day, based on what was about to go down, but he didn't, because he wanted to see his friend Ben, and he was like, wait, what else am I going to do today, watch Netflix, I know by, I know for a fact, by the end of the day, if I'm just sitting here watching Netflix, I'm not going to be a happy camper, so sure enough, Bobby texts him back, he's like, yeah, man, like, I don't got a ride, but if you can pick me up 100%, so sure enough, this friend, you know, I don't know, an hour later, pulls up to Bobby's house and says, hey, man, get in. And, you know, Bobby shows up to the, you know, the window. He's like, hey, what's up, Ben? I haven't seen you in forever. I don't got, just so you know, I don't have a skateboard, just so you're aware. And Ben's like, dude, I got two in the back. Don't worry about that. I got you. So sure enough, you know, Ben hops into the car with Bobby. And, you know, they, they drive, or Bobby hops into the car with Ben. They drive over to the skate park, which is like 15 minutes away from where Bobby lives. And they get out, and, you know, Bobby used to skate a little bit back in the day with his friend. It's been a while, so he's not going to do any tricks or anything like that, but he's just getting along, on the, he's getting on the board. He's kind of riding around a bit, just getting a little bit of exercise. And mostly he's out there just to hang out with Ben because he hasn't seen Ben in a second, and they used to be really tight. So sure enough, you know, Bobby and Ben are just chilling at the skate park. They're having a good time. They're kind of just living their life. And that's when a group, a group, a very specific-looking group, uh, of, of these emo kids. They pop out of nowhere, basically. And they just appear at the end of the skate park. So this skate park is pretty big. It's not like a massive one. It's not like a, where you'd have a professional skater event or something. But it's a pretty big skate park. Like, the city definitely puts them, like, a good amount of bread into making this. So sure enough, you know, they, they're looking over and they see this group of kids. And this group of kids has, like, a ringleader that's, like, standing in front of the other two. And he's kind of dressed like the other, they're all dressed like kind of like the other emo kids in the last story time. So I'm not going to go ahead and describe them. They're dressed a little bit differently, but it's all kind of the same, if you know what I mean. So the sure enough, you know, the kids are just standing at the end of the park. And it's really awkward because like Bobby goes over to Ben. He's like, dude, like, see those kids? And Ben's like, yeah, I've just been staring at them. And Ben's like, dude, they've just been looking at us for like the last thing checks his watch. He's like, Dude, they've just been looking at us for, like, the last, the last like, two minutes, bro. That's really freaking weird. And, you know, Bobby's like, yeah, man, like, this is kind of weird. I don't totally know, like, what's the deal with all this. Like, do you know what's up with them? And Ben's like, dude, I don't go to this skate park. Like, this is your skate park. And Bobby's like, yeah, I don't really skate anymore, so I don't know. Maybe this is, like, a place they normally go to. Either way, this is kind of weird. Let's just stay on this side, and hopefully they'll stay on their side. And if they come over, you know, hopefully they're cool. Spoiler, they're not cool. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're the farthest thing from cool. But anyways, you know, Bobby and, you know, Bobby and Ben try and ignore these kids as these kids literally, they, the thing is, these kids, they're not, they don't even have skates with, they don't even have like a skateboard with them. And you don't need to have a skateboard to hang out at a skate park. You know, a park is a park and it's a cool place to just hang out with some friends. That's 100% true. However, I will say it is a little weird to like show up in a group of kids or a group of like a bunch of people stand there and watch other people without saying anything to each other, without doing anything like that. I will say that itself is pretty weird. So sure enough, you know, Bobby and Ben are just kind of standing there like, dude, this is really freaking weird. What's going on? 
And that's when they look over, and sure enough, they see the emo kids start to walk closer to them. Like, the emo kids were just standing there for a good solid, I would say, 10 minutes. And that's when the emo kids start to walk over to Bobby and Ben. And at this point, you know, Ben turns over. He's like, dude, what is up with your neighborhood, bro? Like, why do you always get the weirdos? And Bobby's like, dude, it's not my fault. I don't go here this often. I don't know. And that's when the group of emo kids shows up. And there's, like, very clearly, like, this is going to sound weird, but, like, an alpha one. Like, okay. I'm not trying to use, like, weird, like, alpha male terms or whatever. Oh, Connor, which one's the sigma male? Shut up if you say that in the, if you say that in the comment section, unironically, dude. Actually, shut up. But anyways, sure enough, you know, the, the kind of, like, the alpha, the pack, whatever that even means in emo pack words, is like, hey, you two, I need a word with you. And Bobby and Ben kind of just look at each other just like, oh, my God, like, what's going on here? It's just kind of strange. You know, Bobby, Ben kind of like whispers over to Bobby like, dude, we are never going back to your park ever again. And Bobby kind of just gives him this look of like, dude, I can't control this. So sure enough, the emo kid, let's just call him the alpha emo kid. <laughs> no, I can't say that for much longer. The, uh, the, the, the main emo kid, King the Pack or whatever, walks up to them. He's like, bro, do you not, under do you not know? And Bobby and uh, Ben kind of look at each other and, you know, Bobby speaks up and says, no, no, like knows what, like no what. The emo kid laughs. He's like, oh, you don't know then. This is our turf, dude. And uh, Bobby and Ben kind of look at each other, and Ben speaks up like, turf? Emo kid's like, yeah, man, you don't understand. This is our turf. And Bobby just means like, w w what does that even mean? And they're like, you, dude, you don't want to mess with us. And one of them like legitimately, legitimately pulls out like a wand. Not, not like a knife or something, not like actually trying to be intimidating. Like this isn't like, oh, they think they're like actually in a gang or something. This is their turf. They pull out a wand, like a freaking Harry Potter magic wand. And, you know, the main emo kid's like, bro, my boy over here knows magic. You don't want to mess with him, dude. And uh, so Bobby and Ben kind of look at these kids and, you know, Ben speaks up. Ben's a little bit more brash. Ben's a little bit more, you know, I don't know, uh, Conf confident is maybe the wrong word, but I'm going to use that word than uh, Bob. Confrontational, that's right. He's a, Ben's a bit more confrontational than Bobby is. So Bobby would have been fine literally just going somewhere else. It's not like there's not a lot of other places. I mean, there's not a lot of other places they could go, but it's not like Bobby's a big skater in the first place. He just wanted to hang out with Ben. And Ben literally goes up. He's like, dude, what are you going to do with that little magic wand? You're going to wave it around, put a spell on me? It's this freaking Harry Potter dude. We don't care. You guys don't have turf. That's ridiculous. Like, look, we're not taking up the whole park. This park's massive. You guys chill over there. We'll do our thing over here. We, like, there won't be any trouble. And the emo kid's like, dude, there's going to be trouble if you guys don't leave or at least pay respects. And, you know, Ben at this point's like, the frick you mean pay respects? Like, what is that? Like, what do you even mean by that? And at this point, Bobby's starting to realize that Ben is kind of finding this amusing more than concerning. Bobby's more concerned by this just because they outnumber them like four to two. And these emo kids definitely like aren't hitting the gym every day. But at the same time, like four to two, it doesn't matter like how big you are. Like you're not taking them one on one. So like Bobby didn't want anything like that. Even if it's that emo kid smoke, he didn't want it in the first place. So sure enough, Bobby kind of looks at Ben and kind of gives him a look of like, hey, like, come on now. And, and Ben is like, no, I'm going with this. And Ben's like, all right, man, you know what? Put a spell on us, bro. Like, if you honestly, like, you know what? We're going to take the punishment. Put a spell on us. And the main emo kid looks at them and is like, dude, you don't want our smoke like that. You don't want us to, like, drop a spell on you like that, bro. You don't know our power. You don't totally get it. And Bobby is just looking at them. And Bobby's, like, kind of, like, completely freaked out at this point. Not that they're going to actually put a spell on him and, you know, I don't know, curse him or something. Bobby's just so freaked out by everything going on that he just doesn't want anything to do with it. So Bobby is like, uh, I don't know, man. How about we just like, we stay here and you go over there. And the emo kid's like, I'm not talking to you, little boy. Which like, Bobby was like so taken aback by this. That the, <laughs> and, and Ben was like, you don't call my friend that. Come on, if you're such a big guy, little boy. And the, at this point, Ben says little boy back to them. If you're not such a big guy, little boy, put a spell on us. And he points to the guy in the back. And there's like a little emo kid in the back with like a little magic wand or something. The main emo kid says, you know what? Gentlemen, gentlemen, I, I don't want you guys to be seriously hurt. So I'm going to give you one more chance to, f to leave the premises or my friend 
will put a spell on you and want, you will be cursed so badly that you will not make it out of this park alive. We have magical powers that you simply don't understand. And Ben is looking at them. And, and Bobby is looking at them. And the emo kids are looking back. At this point, it's a classic. It's a, it's one of those classic Texas standoffs. Like who's gonna shoot first? But instead of shooting, it's uh, either staying there or shooting your magic spells through your wand or whatever. And you know, Ben was like, "All right, no, we're staying here. Put a spell on us. Do it." And the emo kid is like, "Fine. You've sealed your fate." And all of them walk away. At this point, you know, Bobby and Ben look at each other. Bobby's like. Dude, those kids are weird. Like, I have no idea what's going on. Ben is like, really is your neighborhood spawning out the most NPCs in the world, dude? Like, this is crazy. And, the, you know, Bobby and Ben were probably going to go back and forth a little bit about how weird these kids were. But they were, unfortunately, interrupted by chanting. So they look over, and they see the emo kids, like, holding hands, chanting, like, kind of like going in a circle, like, kind of like moving in a circle, holding hands chanting like demonic tongues at this point bobby's like bro i'm kind of freaked out and ben's like dude this is a comedy routine please like chill out at this point they do like the chanting gets louder and louder and it's kind of weird like it's really strange it's like they definitely been rehearsing this and bobby is gonna bobby admits to me that for a split second he was thinking like dude what these kids actually have magic powers spoiler they don't <laughs> they're just weird right and by the end of the chant, you know, one of the kids comes over, the main one grabs the wand, starts swinging it around, and starts walking over to them. He's like, like, one last chance, boys. I'm giving you one last chance to literally survive. This is, I'm giving you one more chance unless you want to, like, if you want to leave here and see your parents again. And Bobby was just in his head like, dude, this kid's legitly weird. And Ben says, you know, bring it on, dude. I want to see the worst you have. And Bobby was like, you know, he admits, you know, he was a little bit concerned just because, I don't know, just like the confidence these emo kids had was kind of startling. And the main emo kid's like, fine. Takes up his wand. He starts like saying a bunch of like random gibberish and waving his wand in a circular motion, pointing it at Bobby, right? Or at Ben, not Bobby. And Ben, you know, kind of looks at Bobby and gives him a wink. And Bobby knows that, but you know, Ben's about to be up to some mischief. And the kid is like, ha da da da, ha da da da, ha -ba! Or does like what is very clearly like the final motion. And Ben literally like opens his eyes super wide, clutches his heart, and drops to the ground and doesn't move. Bobby is like a little bit freaked out, but he also remembers that Ben just like gave him a big wink. And you hear all the emo kids, like some of them are in the back, like, oh my God, oh my God, it actually worked. The spell actually worked. And the main emo kid has this look on his face, like the most scared look you've ever seen. The main emo kid was terrified because for like a couple, like for a good 30 seconds, the main emo kid actually thought that he just killed this kid from his like magic spell or whatever. So sure enough, you know, the emo kid like drops his wand, rushes up to Ben and is like, no, no. The spell, it was too powerful. I should have held back. And Bobby's just looking at him. And the emo kids, the other ones, are standing like talking to each other. And they're like frantically talking to each other. They are really concerned about this. They're like, dude, do we call the cops? Do we bury the body? Like, what do we do? Like, what if our parents find out? All this kind of nonsense, right? And that's when you hear giggling. It started as giggling. But then it just evolved into laughter. And that's when Ben flips over and is this, you can see that he's just been laughing. He couldn't hold it in any longer. And he gets up, he's like, oh my God. Oh my God, you fell for it. This is the funniest thing ever. He's like, guys, you're not wizards. You're just weird. Go to, look, go to that side of the park. We're going to be here and there's nothing you can do about it. And that's when I think the emo kids kind of realize that, you know, they weren't going to scare them out of there, and they definitely were not going to fight them out of there either. So sure enough, the emo kids are, they don't even say anything. These kids have, or they're kind of, I guess they're kind of done with trying to scare, like, Bobby and Ben out of there. So they pick up their stuff, they get up, and they leave. And Bobby and Ben, you know, they, they go back to doing their whatever they were doing before. But it really was just never the same after that, because, like, for the rest of the day... Bobby, like Ben would just continuously make emo kid jokes and Bobby would laugh and make them back. So in fact, the rest of the day was better than ever before. 
And this happened a long time ago. Like this happened like four or five years ago. And Bobby and Ben actually can't like reunited a couple years, like about a year ago. And literally like the only, like the only thing they did during their, like when they reunited was retold this story and like made jokes about it the entire time. And uh, yeah, this is probably, if you want to continue supporting the channel, please click watch on the video, video on screen right now. Bye. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. How's it going, everyone? Hope you're having a good day. So uh, today we got a very, very, very interesting story. Actually, we got two stories, but the first story is um, about... <laughs> I get the most interesting submissions. Um, by the way, submit stuff to my Instagram. It's in the description. Um, it's of a uh, emo vampire kid tries to eat some subscriber in class. You know what? I'm not going to try and explain it. I'm not going to go through the mental gymnastics to try and justify such a title. We're just going to go straight into the story. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this Alex. And in Alex's class, uh, it doesn't really matter what the class is. We can just say it's a history class. Um, in this class, there's an emo vampire kid. And normally I would give him a shorthand name, but I just think that the calling someone emo vampire kid is so funny. I'm just not, I'm just going to call, I'm just, I'm just going to say emo vampire kid every single time this kid's name comes up. So anyways, Alex and his friends, one day we're sitting behind the emo vampire kid. And when I mean emo vampire kid, I mean, first of all, he was dressing in the all black aesthetic, had like, he had, he, he was like a mix of both, but it was like emphasis on the vampire so he came in kind of like the emo dress, like one would look kind of like that. However, he also had like a black cloak and he had fake uh, fangs every single day. And, uh, you know, that's like, that's kind of funny. Like, whatever. It doesn't really matter. If you're like a normal dude and you like do that, like, I mean, okay, you're probably not super normal if you do that. But let's say you act normal, but you just have that on. Like, who, who really cares? But if you act like you're actually a 16th century vampire, eh, might be some problems. Maybe a few here and there. Um, but anyways, Alex and his friends were sitting behind the, the emo vampire kid. And, uh, they just, like, they, they normally didn't sit behind him, because you know how, like, in classes, you have unassigned assigned seats, it's like, oh, you always sit there every day, so you kind of just assume that everyone else doesn't sit there, because they're sitting where their unassigned assigned seat is. Well, one day, about a third of the way through the year, right, um, the kids, you know, or there was a bunch of kids sitting in the spots that Alex and his friends used to sit in, which was kind of middle of the front row, right? So they're looking around, and they're like, okay... There's like a seat like in the way front, and we're not necessarily trying to do that, or kind of farther in the back behind that one kid that's kind of weird. Alex and his friends kind of decide that, you know, they want to sit back there. Like, it's not like they're sitting in the same row as the emo vampire kid. They're just sitting one row behind him, so that shouldn't really be an issue. And the emo vampire kid got the entire row to himself, partially because I think people were scared, but also partially because... He, his cloak, like, was flowing onto the two seats next to him. So if someone was to sit, they'd have to be like, hey, can I move your your cloak? I just don't think people are trying to, like, come up with that sentence, right? So Alex and his friends, they sit behind the emo vampire kid, and class begins, and they're all, like, kind of paying attention. But when you sit in the back and when you're with your friends, you can only be, you can only have so much attention, right? You can only pay only so close of attention, and uh, they were kind of sitting there and talking, and all of a sudden, the emo vampire kid turns around, does like a full 180, and just is glaring directly at Alex. And Alex, in the middle of a con in the middle of a sentence, just kind of like stops talking and just kind of like looks at the emo vampire kid, and kind of just looks at the kid. Um, yeah, they're just kind of having a staring contest at this point, and uh, Alex is really uncomfortable because. This is not normal. Uh, the uh, the simulation did not prepare us for this. You know, it's uh, what? Yeah. Uh, anyways, right. So the emo vampire kid, he he's just staring at him, and then he hisses at him, and like shows his fangs. He's like, Hiss, and like shows his fangs off or something. And Alex and his friends are there. It's funny, but they don't even laugh. They're a little bit too scared to laugh right now. Not that like this kid's actually a vampire, but you know that you know. It's just so unpredictable what he's going to do. I mean, 
you can read the title. I'm assuming you can read, which I, I'm not convinced everyone who watches my videos can read. Um, <laughs> but that's, that's, for an, that's for another story. Um, but for those of you who can, you know, have graduated past uh, preschool, which I'm not sure all of you guys have, <laughs> But um, you, you can probably read the title, and yeah, it, it says that there's an emo vampire kid that bit someone. So obviously this kid's up to no good, but uh, Alex doesn't assume that, you know, this kid's gonna, you know, bite them or something. So here's where the real trouble comes. You might be thinking, well, this hasn't been the real trouble. No, it, it gets worse. It's, it's, not, it's not great. So, you know, the next day, so for about like a week, the emo vampire kid continuously, like, turns around midway through class and will stare at either Alex or one of his two friends. And it's just really weird. And uh, they're kind of just like, okay, this is really strange. I And they were considering sitting in the front of the room, right? So midway through class, you know, Alex gets up because he has to go to the bathroom. And the emo vampire kid sees this. So Alex gets up. He walks past his desk. And immediately, Alex feels himself falling and hitting the ground. Alex, a little embarrassed, you know, gets up quickly and, like, goes to the bathroom. And when he comes back, Alex sits down, and his friend's like, Dude, I can't believe that kid tripped you. And Alex is like, What? And they're like, Yeah, like, as you're walking, like, the emo vampire kid. <laughs> I just love that name, emo vampire. The emo vampire kid stuck his leg out and tripped you, dude. And uh, Alex is like, What? And the emo vampire kid turns around and, like, laughs or whatever. It's like, <laughs> like, just some really cringe laugh. Or, I, I don't even know. But he's, like, he's chuckling. I don't know, man. I've never heard someone actually say chuckling. I'm just going to say it. Like, I know it's a word, but I just, no, no, no one says that. But, yeah, so anyways, emo vampire kid is just, like, turns back around. And uh, Alex is getting kind of mad because, you know, he ate, um dirt let's say that in front of everyone man and that's not necessarily something you want to it's, it's embarrassing i mean i don't know what gray they're in I, they definitely i don't think that they were in high school but they also weren't like toddlers at this point so they're probably like late middle school or something like that but yeah i mean that's that's still pretty embarrassing so you know on the the, the bell rings they get up and the emo kid must have been super confident because the emo kid stuck their leg out again as to trip Alex again, but obviously Alex was a bit more aware, and the emo kid did not time their leg extension correctly. So the leg, like, shoots... Imagine you're, like, walking past someone, and you're about to walk near them, and their leg shoots out. Like, is that really about to trip you? No. And Alex looks at the emo kid, and the emo kid is laughing and smiling. is like, hey, 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 whatever. And Alex is like, dude, you're weird, and just so you know, vampires don't even exist. And he kind of said that as kind of like he didn't have a good... Because Alex was mad, and he really didn't have a good comeback at the tip of his head. He couldn't come up with one. So when he said, like, vampires don't even exist, he in his head he's like, damn, Alex, like, you can't roast... You can't roast for the life, for your own life, man. Like, like come on now. Like, that was the worst roast ever. But then Alex kind of makes eye contact with the emo uh, vampire virgin whatever, right? <laughs> Uh, no, emo vampire kid, sorry. Um, uh, and, and the emo vampire kid was very clearly disturbed by such an accusation that vampires aren't real. Ah, how dare you? So the, uh, you know, the vampire kid looks at him and he gets all serious. And Alex is like, oh, uh, in his head, he's like, oh, I, I, I guess that did work then. Okay, that's, that's nice. And the vampire kid's like, I'm going to give you to the count of three. And if you don't take that back, your life will never be the same. Alex in his head was like, okay, like, I don't know what this kid's capable of. Like, he's really weird, so I know he's capable of being weird. Um, but no, I I'm not going to take it back. That's, that's ridiculous, right? I'm not going to, like, you know, submit to this kid because I said vampires aren't real and that, you know, hurt his feelings. Thanks, don't care about your feelings, guys. No, but, uh, it, and yeah, uh, he's like, no, I'm just not going to do that. So he looks at him, and they basically just have a staring contest. And the emo kid's like, one. It's always so awkward to me when there's, like, a countdown, and you know that the person that the countdown's being levied against just isn't going to do anything. 
Like, you know, it's like three, two, and you just know that, like, the long, stretched-out countdown is just a countdown to nothing. But anyways, you know, he, he's kind of just, like, looking at him with his blank stare, and Emo Kid's like, two, three, he's like, 3.0, and Alex is looking at him like, dude, that's not different from three, man. And he's like, fine, then you've chosen to ruin your life, and the Emo Kid, Emo vampire kid sorry correction quickly gets up and grabs the stuff and runs out of the class and is like cape flutters behind him as he's running back or whatever and alex just kind of looks at his friend and his friend looks back at him and then alex looks at his friend again his friend just looks back at him and then they look at each other then they look at the third friend and then the third friend looks at both of them and then they look all look at each other and they're like damn that was that was something, man. So anyways, it gets more interesting the next day. Because the emo kid doesn't show up to class. Right away, at least. He shows up a little later. And, uh, you know, they sit down, and after, like, five minutes, they're like, oh, word, like, you know, this kid isn't in class. Like, that's good. Like, I don't want to, like, we don't have to deal with him. So Alex and his friends were actually, like, they were chilling. They are having a pretty good time. And, uh... Icon. So anyways, like, him and his friends were just, like, waiting, and, like, the Wait, emo vampire Connor kid... Bugs? Hi, Connor. Hi, Connor. Ha Hi, Connor. Ha How'd they get in? I thought I locked the door! No! All right, just a little distraction. I had to fight off these, uh, you know, these intruders, a.k.a. stalker fans, with my two bare fists. Um, but yeah, you know, I fought them both, both off. 2v1, absolutely destroyed them both. I'm just significantly better than both of them in uh, street combat, so they didn't stand a chance. But anyways, back to the story. So they're waiting for the, uh, you know, the emo vampire kid to, you know, to, to come in, and uh, he doesn't. So they're like, oh, word, so we're actually going to have, like, an, an okay class period for once, right? You know, this is going to be okay. And that, that's where it, it's no longer true. It's, it's, it, it gets worse. It unfortunately gets worse from here, right? So they're waiting, and they're just chilling in class, and they're having a good time. And that's when they see the door creak open a little bit. And nobody notices this except Alex, apparently. Alex looks at the door, and he sees, like, someone looking in. Like, you know, he opens the door just so slightly, he sees eyes looking at him. And he immediately recognizes, like, oh my god, that's the emo vampire kid. And it wouldn't be weird, because kids are sometimes late to class. The teacher's not happy, but it happens. I don't know. But the kid wasn't coming in. He was just looking into the classroom. And he wasn't just looking into the classroom. He was looking at Alex specifically. So Alex is like, ah, hell nah, bro. This is too weird for me. So Alex breaks eye contact. He looks back down. He's like, okay, whatever. He's like, okay, at this, it, you know, at least it's going to stop here. It's not going to get any weirder. And that's when he hears the door fling open and the emo, the emo vampire kid sprint in the class with his, like, arms behind him, like, Naruto running style, and his cape is flying all around or whatever, and he just is, like, runs in screaming. The whole class stops what they're doing because it's pretty, it's pretty hard to ignore this, one would say. And uh, the kid runs in and jumps on Alex's leg and literally chomps into his leg. Uh, and Alex is like, ah, like kind of like lets out a thing, a, a scream or whatever. The teacher, a lot, in a lot of these stories, the teachers are like too stunned to act right away. But this teacher was fast. He was on top of it like that. The teacher ran over, grabbed the emo vampire kid, kind of ripped him off Alex. Alex immediately grabbed his leg, looked at it. There was like these like weird bite marks. You know when someone like bites your arm? Because that happens all the time. And it kind of leaves like indentations, but you know those indentations are going to go away in five minutes. And as long as it doesn't break the skin, you're pretty good. You're pretty safe. The teacher still said like, he, he you know, teacher's like, did he break the skin? Are you bleeding? Alex said no. And the teacher's like, well, you should probably just go to the nurse's office. Just make sure it's checked up. And he's like, real quick, do you know why this happened? And, you know, Alex is like, no. And the emo kid's like, lies, lies, you know. And the teacher looks at Alex, and Alex is like, oh, well, I mean, I did say, like, vampires aren't real. Um, I, yeah, I mean, if, that's, if that caused this, then... And the, the teacher looks down the emo vampire kid, and the emo vampire kid is, like, hissing at Alex. And Alex is just looking at him back, like, uh, okay... 
And the teacher's like, all right, uh, Alex, go, go to the nurse's office. I'm going to deal with this. Everyone else in class, open up to chapter six, take notes. By the time I'm back, I'm going to, I'm going to question and quiz you guys on what's going on. Like, don't be like slacking off or anything. Like, this is still like, we're still in class or whatever and leaves. I mean, I, I think the teacher just wasn't having it today and I can understand. So Alex goes to the nurse's office and yeah, he's fine. It's kind of whatever. And uh, turns out, you know, the emo vampire kid was asked to move classes. He was in a different section just because they thought it wouldn't be good to have Alex and him in the same section. And why punish Alex by mixing up his schedule? Because he was bitten. Uh, that, he seems like the victim in this sense. Anyways, next story is about a school bus driver who tries to fight a kid. It's a very, very interesting story. You should stick around. We're going to call the subscriber. I didn't give him a name on my list. I have a little list of stuff. Uh, we're going to call him Daniel. Okay, that's a good name. I don't know if you could hear my keyboard clicks. But Daniel. So anyways, Daniel was on the bus. And he was like, an obs he, he observed this whole thing go down. In the very front of the bus, there was this annoying kid. I mean, he was kind of annoying. He was, kind of, you know how there's like, I don't know if you guys have this in your grade, if you're still in school, um, because only Stanford PhDs watch the Connor Pugs YouTube channel, not, yeah. Uh, uh, but anyways, like, I, I don't know if you guys have had this kid in your class or back in the day when you were in like middle school or something. But there's like that one kid who is like nice, I guess, and kind of, but he's really, really out there. And it's good to be out there, but he's like really out there. In the sense that, like, everything's about attention, everything is crazy, everything is... And he's kind of just known as the annoying kid, because he is annoying. Anyways, right, so he brings food in the bus. And it's, like, the one rule of the bus, besides don't um, unscrew the bus while it's going, or set the lighter fluid on fire. The one real rule, rule of the bus was you just can't bring food on the bus. Can't bring food, can't bring drinks. Like, if you have it... It has to be in your backpack, because some kids did bring a lunch to school. You can't take it out. You can't eat it like that, because, you know, they allowed that years ago, and the bus was always a mess, and the school driver would have to clean it up, and then there's, like, rats or roaches or something. He's like, I'm done. I'm not doing that. It's the one rule. It's my bus. We can have at least one rule here. So the spoiled, uh, not spoiled, the cringy, uh, what, what did I say? The annoying kid. The annoying kid. It's it's always the insert adjective kid, whatever. Um, so the annoying kid brings food in the bus, and very politely, the school bus driver's like, hey, you can't have that. And the annoying kid's like, what? You're not letting me eat food? Dude, it's in the Constitution, man. I can eat food. I swear, like, people say it as a joke, but there are some people that, like, unironically will say, it's in the Constitution, to this something that is this not in the Constitution? And it's like, it's my constitutional right uh, to get Chick-fil-A on Sunday, man. Why are you closed? But anyways, you know, the bus driver very politely is like, sorry, it's the one rule of the bus. And the kid, the annoying kid, actually complies. He puts this, you know, the food away or whatever. The next day on the bus, you know, this kid brings food again. And this time, you know, the school bus driver is a little snappier, like, hey, I told you yesterday you can't be bringing food. You gotta put it away. So, you know, he puts it away. And, you know, the spoil the annoying kid like kind of sneaks some snacks or whatever, sneaks some bites or something. And, you know, maybe if this kid w wasn't getting breakfast, maybe I I don't know. There might be a reason, but he was also the the annoying kid was was being pretty annoying about it, so it's hard to feel too sympathetic. On the third day, the kid took out this like candy bar, unwrapped it, and took a bite into it. And the school bus driver, because this was, like, before, like, they even were going. Like, if you're going to eat on the bus and you really can't, first of all, don't go basically in the front row. Don't have the aisle seat. And don't eat it while the bus driver is taking attendance, watching you guys walk in. Like, that's the dumbest thing ever. Sit in the back, kind of, like, crouch down. And, and while they're driving, they're not going to know, okay? Unless someone tells on you. But anyways, like, he's eating, and the bus driver comes over and takes the candy bar it's like, I've told you three times already, I'm sorry, like, this is the final strike, I'm confiscating this. And the, the annoying kid was not having this at all. He was so angry, he was, like, fighting back. He wasn't physically fighting back, but he's like, you can't take that away from me, you're stealing from me, I'm gonna report you to this, right, right. And the bus driver says, you know, it's actually now, you know, this bus is in, you know, I, I work for the school, 
you know, because this was like a private bus that the school contracted out. So maybe it didn't actually work, but this it was a school rule because it was like a bus rule. And while they were on the bus, it was like school, whatever. He said, it is a rule. And like, you can report me all you want, but you broke the rule and like, I'm allowed to confiscate it. Like, that's as part of it. Sorry, bud. And the annoying kid was silent because he was always talking super loud. He was silent for the rest of the bus ride. The subscriber, Daniel, kind of just thought, because Daniel was, like, watching all this go down. Daniel kind of just thought that, like, the kid was embarrassed. But, in fact, the kid was not embarrassed. I mean, he probably was. But he was not just embarrassed. He was also plotting his revenge. So the next day comes around, and this is the fateful day where everything goes down. And the, and the kid, once again, brings food. The bus driver, once again, is not very happy about this, which I can understand. I mean, the kid brought food when he shouldn't have. And the kid and the bus driver is like, like, I got to take that away from you again. Like, if you keep doing this, you're not going to be allowed on the bus. And the annoying kid's like, oh, is that true? And what he had in his hand was a big thing of, like, chocolate milk. But it was, like, kind of a stickier, more sludgy, okay, not sludge, but it was a thicker substance. There we go. It was a thicker substance. And, uh, you know, he, this, the annoying kid makes direct eye contact with the bus driver and takes off the cap and literally pours the chocolate milk all over the seat. It's, uh, it drips all over, drips on the floor, you know, is like sticking to everything, is falling all over the place. And, you know, the annoying kid is like, well, that's what you get for taking my food. And in the middle of saying that, the bus driver, who does something he probably shouldn't have, just so you know, I don't condone this, but it's a story. I'm just telling it. The bus driver literally slaps this kid across the face. He must have just been having a bad day or week or month or existence. I don't even know. He was just not having it right now. And boom, the entire class or everyone on the bus, I should say, who was kind of like talking with each other, go dead silent. And of course, the, the, the annoying kid or whatever starts like crying because I don't know, he's in like fifth grade. You can't be doing that to a kid. Just kick them off the bus or punish them. And immediately the bus driver just no, realizes that he messed up. So the bus driver's like everyone out like, and because like this was before they left and all these kids are like, but I got to get to school. My And he says, I don't care. I went off now. So the bus driver basically just has a breakdown at this point. And, uh, yeah, everyone's standing there. Uh, one of the kids, thankfully, has a phone because they were young enough, I think fourth or fifth grade, where most of them didn't have any way to communicate. Thankfully, one of them did, called one of the parents that ended up communicating with all the parents. So all the parents came and picked them up, and the school was informed. And the next day that they got on the bus, um, and yeah, there was a totally new bus driver. And uh, I think because of how the bus driver reacted, the annoying kid got didn't get in trouble at all, which obviously being, you know, a jerk and spilling stuff, you know, on the bus driver's bus because, you know, he made you mad. It's a bad thing to do, but it's not as bad as, like, literally slapping a kid. Like, that's terrible. So, yeah, they uh, never saw that bus driver again, and I got a feeling he will not be driving that many more buses in his future. Leave a like on this video, and I'll actually give you nothing at all. Now, but what's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. And just imagine... You're chilling with your girlfriend. Life is awesome. You stare into her eyes lovingly, and then all of a sudden this emo kid walks in and says that you must fight him to the death to decide who gets your girlfriend. And at that moment, you seriously just sit there and question your life choices. That is the story I'll be telling today. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's just jump right into this story. So we're going to call a subscriber who submitted the story James. So anyways, there's, an e there's a kid in James's class who we're going to call the emo kid. He kept to himself. He wore crazy makeup and the dark clothing and whatever. And uh, honestly, it doesn't really matter what you wear. But he was also extremely melodramatic. Like he would come in and he'd be like, Society doesn't understand me. No one gets me. I'll never fit in. He, he, he was kind of like one of those kids that kind of just like would say this stuff and then would be like, why do I not have friends? I'm just a melodramatic freak all the time, which uh, I mean, I was pretty weird <laughs> in middle school. So like I can't really speak. But uh, then again, hey, man. Anyways, so there's also a girl in uh, I don't know. I'll just call her like uh, we'll let's call her Kate, right? It's name of my friend back home. Uh, so anyways, James and the emo kid 
unfortunately, decided had to cross cross paths because they both had a thing for this girl. And this Friday, right? So this story all starts like this weekend or not this weekend. We'll say starts on Monday. And this Friday, remember, not actually this Friday. I mean, this Friday in the story was going to be the school dance. And the whole thing was like, whoever got the slow dance with this girl was basically going to like, if you, so the thing at James's school is if you slow danced with a girl, you were basically dating her at this point. You guys were practically in love at that point. So it was a pretty big deal who was going to get the slow dance. And it was the emo kid versus James. And this became very public knowledge. Like the emo kid was telling everyone that he was going to 100% get the slow dance. And people kind of knew James because James was more popular. He wasn't like, I don't know, some like really annoying popular person. He was just like a cool guy that everyone liked. I mean, at least according to James, who submitted this story. So who really knows, but we'll go with it, right? So everyone kind of knew that both the emo kid and uh, James were both fighting for this girl, Kate. And Kate made it pretty clear that, you know, she was not going to say yes to the emo kid. Like, sorry, unlucky. Life just works out like that. But she was considering saying yes to James. She was kind of just keeping... uh, The truth was that she was going to say yes to James if he asked. However, she just wanted to keep him kind of like on his toes and questioning or whatever, right? So, uh, yeah, throughout that whole week, uh, the emo kid and James, they didn't really, like, they weren't, like, in a fight with each other, but they it was kind of like, they were kind of like rivals in a sense, even though they never had any direct confrontation. And let's just skip ahead to that Friday. It was the day of the school dance. It was emo kid versus James. So anyways, at this point, you know, the emo kid is like, you know, he's kind of like, he's standing in the corner of the dance, right? Look, I was pretty awkward in, in high school and middle school when it came to those big dances, but to be fair, everyone else was as well. But uh, the emo kid was kind of taking it to a whole different level. He literally was like slouched in the corner of the room, his like long black hair kind of like down, almost like, you know, that scene from the ring with that, like, the girl who comes out of the TV, he was kind of looking like that chick for a second. So he was definitely not helping himself out in this situation. And at this point, James and his boys were kind of standing, like, together, whatever they were dancing to. I don't know. I don't freaking know what they play at high school dances. Maybe some uh, Whip Nene by Silento. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's a middle school dance, bro. I don't know how this works. But anyways, they're kind of waiting for the slow song to come on. Maybe some... I don't know, some, like, song by Adele or something like that, like, the when, like, (sighs) dude, I always try and, like, say lines from songs during these stories, and I just blank every single time. Um, But anyways, yeah, so they're all kind of waiting around there, and it was, uh, eventually, the slow dance song came on. And remember, you might be thinking, oh, man, who cares? It's just, like, a slow song. No, 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 what you have to understand is the slow song meant everything to these kids like the slow song basically if you had a slow song with some girl because remember they were in middle school this this was like seventh eighth grade so the probably the farthest you ever went with a girl was like slow dancing or maybe holding her hand if you were like crazy because you know if you hold a hand if you, if you hold a girl's hand for too long there is a chance you get her pregnant so <laughs> definitely not misinformation from the connor pugs channel <laughs> but anyways slow dance was a really big deal and all of a sudden the song comes on. And the thing was, right, uh, the, the, the emo kid was too busy kind of like sulking about society in the corner of the room to react quick enough. So James was like, all right, bro, like that guy's playing himself. I'm going to go in. So James very quickly goes in and boom, he gets there, goes up. He's like, hey, like, hey, like, can I have this dance? And she very happily says yes, because she said, like, oh, I don't know if I'll say yes. She knew. She was bluffing the whole time. And James kind of felt pretty confident about it. And even though she said, I don't know, he was pretty confident because her friends were like, yeah, dude, she's totally bluffing. Like, I hate to expose my friend like that, but she definitely has a thing for you. You're, you're chilling. You're in the green. So anyways, James goes in. He feels pretty good about the whole thing. But let me just say that the emo kid eventually looks up and then he sees this. And the emo kid is not having it. Uh, so <laughs> he does something pretty insane. So uh, strap in and definitely prepare for the cringe. If you have your uh, cringe seatbelt un- unbuckled, I'm actually going to fine you for your own safety. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and uh, buckle that cringe seatbelt because there was like a DJ station and there was like a guy who was like, DJing quote unquote and there was like a microphone so like you so like the DJ could say like hey like 20 minutes till the dance is done or get ready for this hype song or whatever and other than that he just he was really just a Spotify playlist he just like 
he just edited the Spotify playlist, right? However, the DJ let the Spotify playlist run on autoplay or whatever, and he went to the bathroom. So the emo kid ran up to the, uh, he ran up to, like, the spot or whatever. He grabs the microphone. He stops the music. First of all, he goes up to the Spotify, clicks pause on the music, and screams into the microphone, wait! And everybody turns around. Everybody turns around, and they look at this kid. And they're all kind of, like, looking at this emo kid who's standing at the front of the room with, like, the, the, the microphone. He picks it up. He's like, Kate, no! So at this point, everyone's kind of looking at this kid like, oh, my God. Because they all knew that, like, he wanted to have the dance with Kate, but, like, James obviously got it. So they were like, ah, that's tough, man. Like, life sometimes doesn't work out the way you want it to. Like, that's just unfortunate how that goes. However, you know, he goes up there and he's like, he goes in the microphone, like he says, wait, and everyone turns around. The music is off. He's like, Kate, may I have this dance? And everyone's so confused because first of all, he turned off the slow song in the middle of the song. And also she was already dancing with someone. And instead of just going up to her, he makes a massive scene in front of everyone, grabbing the microphone and screaming into it, saying, like, will you have this dance? And the thing is, right, it's caused enough commotion that the guy, like, the DJ that was hired ran back. Because I think he was supposed to be there the whole time, but he needed to, like, rip a piss or something, so he needed to go. And he runs back over. He's like, give that back to me. He, like, snatches it out of the emo kid's hand. He's like, sorry for the, inter- inter- sorry for the interruption, guys. Turns the music back on, like, starts, like not cursing out this kid, he's a middle schooler, but being like, dude, what do you think you're doing? You can't just like, come up here and take this stuff. Like, if like if you do this again, I'm going to tell your teachers and you'll be in big trouble. Or I mean, uh, I, I don't know how much trouble a, uh, a, a hired DJ can get you in, but, you know, the emo kid returns to his cor- corner and literally just sits down, just slumps into the corner of the room, which James felt kind of bad. He felt a little bit bad because, like, James has definitely been in that position, I say that very kind of liberally because James has not actually been in a position where he grabs the microphone at the school dance, stops the music, and asks the girl out unsuccessfully. He hasn't specifically been there, but he's definitely been in a situation where it just hasn't gone his way. So he feels bad, man. You know, feels bad, man. You hate to see it. But uh, yeah, anyways, James like continued on with the slow... I mean, he's not going to stop his life because this kid has an unlucky moment. Like, that's tough. So, uh, yeah, you know, while I, I will say there was kind of an awkward moment because while, like, James is, like, slow dancing with Kate, he kind of, like, turns around. Like, they, they kind of, like, turn around so James is facing the emo kid, and he just looks up, and the emo kid is staring at him with, like, the creepiest, most stalkerish, most scariest stare he's ever seen because the emo kid is slumped over, like, the girl from the ring, right, and is just, like, staring right at him. He's, like, long black hair, like covering most of his face besides his eyes and he's like slumped over too like kind of like crouching over like an old guy with a cane or something but without a cane and james is like hey do you mind if we turn like 45 degrees this way or 90 degrees this way ah thank you that's much better (laughs) so he doesn't have to see him anymore or actually let's do a whole 180 i mean he didn't ask for a 180 because he didn't want like kate to be making eye contact with him either but yeah so that was a bit of a tough situation however you might be thinking well i mean at this point, reasonably, the emo kid must have realized that this just wasn't his day, and uh, he must have just, like, given up, which he's already, I mean, he's already embarrassed himself. Like, he probably gave up after this point. And uh, while that would be pretty fair for you to believe, that was unfortunately not the, that was just not what happened, because the emo kid would continue, um, let me just say that the emo kid thought that if he, if he had a sword fight with James, that he would be able to win the honor of his lady. I'm not even kidding you. Uh, real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment emo down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. Leave, I will try and heart as many of those comments as I possibly can. And also, if you want to support the channel, the best possible thing you can do is just watch this video throughout the entirety, the entirety of this video. And then afterwards, if you could watch some of my old videos, that helps more than you can ever imagine. And please go in the comment section and tell me how many of my old videos you've watched today or this week. I'll heart it and say thank you because it helps me out more than you can ever imagine. Anyways, let's go back to the story because the emo kid is not done. In fact, he is far from being done. 
So what happened after the school dance? Like over the weekend, um, James actually met up with Kate. They went to like go get dinner together. And that's when they officially started dating, whatever that means in eighth grade, which means, oh, my God, they're going to sit together at lunch. Oh, my God, dude, that's crazy, right? Uh, but anyway, so James officially starts dating this girl. Word gets around really quickly. And eventually the emo kid, I I'm pretty sure at this point the emo kid would have known, but... By his next actions, it's not super clear. So that Monday is the first kind of like lunch day that uh, uh, Kate and, uh, what, what's his name, James, are going to be having their first real at-school lunch date, which is a pretty big deal for the eighth graders there. Obviously, it's not that big of a deal in general, but hey, man, let them have their fun. And so, uh, yeah, he sits down, like he finds Kate, they sit down, and they're at a table by themselves. And like people are looking over and talking and be like, ooh, someone's dating, <laughs> whatever, right? And uh, however, James, you know, Kate is facing away from the door, but James is facing the door. And James sees the door open up and he sees the emo kid walk in. And James is like, ah, this is tough. Because James feels bad. He legitimately feels bad because, I mean, if the roles were reversed, he would feel bad like seeing the girl that he really liked a week ago sitting with the guy who was low-key his like enemy rival on a date. Like that would be tough to see. And James started to feel a little bit worried when the emo kid starts to approach him, right? Starts to approach him. And uh, yeah, so the emo kid walks up to their table and at this point, Kate also realizes that someone's walking up, so she turns around. And the emo kid walks up and doesn't look at James. He's not paying any attention to James. He's actually acting as if James doesn't even exist at this point. The emo kid turns to the girl, uh, Kate, I forgot her name for a second, says, Kate, I've been wanting to ask this for a while, but since we've become so close in the last couple weeks, which they have never spoken before, but that is beyond the point of at this point, that is beyond the point. He's like, I was wondering if you would like to go on a date with me, if you would like to start dating. And uh, James is like, oh, no, he doesn't know. How does he not know? Because James is like, everybody knows. Everybody told everybody, but I guess everybody didn't tell the emo kid. Of course they didn't. And Kate at this point is like, oh, well, I'm very flattered. And the emo kid's like, well, if you're flattered, then you should say yes, correct? And at this point, she's like, oh, well, you see, it's actually not great timing because I'm actually currently in a relationship. And the emo kid's like, what? How? With who? And James is like, oh, my God, this is this is so awkward. He doesn't know. So James has kind of assumed that the emo kid didn't think anything of the fact that James got like the dance with her, which... In all reality, he was the emo kid was kind of the one who had the most common sense in that situation because just because someone dances with a girl once doesn't mean anything, right? But at this high, at this middle school, if you got the slow dance, you were basically in. You were locked in at this point is what I'm trying to say. So Kate has to go on to awkwardly explain to the emo kid that, well, um, the guy that she's sitting at right now on the lunch date with happens to be the guy that she's dating. And the emo kid turns to James, looks at him, looks him down and up, like there's like the elevator look when he looks at like the top of his head, looks all the way down and looks all the way up, turns back to Kate and is like, really, dude? You decided to date this guy when you could have dated me? He's like, bruh. And he just like, he just kind of like storms out of there. And uh, James looks at Kate and he's like, Dude, how did that kid not know that we're dating at this point? Like, I swear to God, all your friends told everybody. Like, and Kate's like, dude, my friends didn't tell everyone. And James is like, if you ask anyone at the school, besides the emo kid, apparently, they will know. And Kate's like, yeah, okay, my, my friends do talk a lot. And they're like, well, that was pretty awkward. Hopefully nothing else happens again. You might be thinking at this point, Connor, the emo kid must stop. There is no way he continues on. There's not a chance... That he continues, right? Well, 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 I got some news for you guys. He does continue, and it's bad. Because uh, you might be thinking that, oh, well, the emo kid stormed off and he was done. No. About 20 minutes later, when there's only like 10 minutes left to lunch, James sees the doors open up again, and he's like, you gotta be kidding me, dude. Because the emo kid walks through. But this time, he is like stomping towards James super angrily. He runs up to the table practically, looks at James, looks him in the eye, and says, it's not over between us.
it is far from over between us. And he's like taking his little finger and like pointing at James. And James is like, okay, nice. Like, I, 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 like we do not care. Like, I, 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 I don't know what else to say at this point. Like, okay, cool, nice. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> what, do you, what do you want me to say? And the emo kid after that is like, you better watch yourself. It's about to get bad. And he like storms out of there. And, you know, at this point, James is like, okay, well, I guess uh, that answers my question. So the next day at lunch is where things get really, really, really crazy. So he's sitting there with, J- uh, with Kate on his second date. James is enjoying himself. He's having a good time with Kate. They're enjoying each other's presence. They're, they're doing well. I mean, they're, they're kind of clicking, so things might continue on, right? And that's when the emo kid walks in. And he's carrying, like, two sticks, like, two pretty good-sized sticks that he probably found in the backyard of the school. So in the backyard of the school, there's, like, a mini forest, nothing too crazy, but there's, like, a pretty big forest back there. And the emo kid must have gone back there and, like, found two decent-sized sticks. He walks into the cafeteria with one stick in one hand and one stick in the other, and James is just looking at him. And he's like, he kind of says like to Kate, he's like, oh, okay, we got trouble. Kate turns around, looks at it, and it's just like, turns back around and is like, what? And James is like, yeah, I have no idea what's happening, but I guess we're about to see. So the emo kid walks up to the table, like kind of like waddles his way up. And he's like, you. And he like hands the stick to James. And James is like, uh, like, I need a little explanation. What do you want me to do with this? Like, it's not super clear. The emo kid's like, you and I will have a sword battle, and whoever wins the sword battle will have the uh, will 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 win the honor of your lady, and will. At this point, like Kate's like, what? And James is like, dude, what are you saying? He's like, fight me, fight me to the death. The winner gets your girl. And James is like, no. And the emo kid's like, oh, so you're scared of me then? You know that you're gonna lose, and that's why you don't want to do it. And James is like, well, I'm not convinced I'm going to lose. I mean, I'm not an expert at random stick fighting or whatever. But at the same time, why would I want to even engage? Like, why would I even want to do it? And the emo kid's like, well, uh, I, I mean, I, I mean, for the sake of your honor, bro, like, do you really want to be known as the guy who chickened out because he's a chicken? And James is like, well... I mean, I, I don't really care, but I also don't want to be known as the guy who went on, st- who during the like the dance last Friday grabbed the DJ's microphone and like stopped the music to like ask out a girl who was very clearly in the middle of dancing with someone else, and then come into school the next day super angry with a bunch of sticks and try and like fight some guy to get the girl that already obviously said no to him twice. At this point, the emo kid's like. So you're, what you're saying is that you're too scared to fight me and because you know you'll lose. James is like, dude, we're going in circles right now. I'm not fighting you. I'm not having a sword fight to the death. Like, okay, I'm just not doing that. At this point, the emo kid's like, fine. Well, you're about to see me in my final form where I am the most powerful. And James is like, "Uh, okay. Like, word. And then the emo kid reaches up to James and rips out like a strand of his hair. And James is like, dude, like that hurt. Like, why would you do that? And the emo kid's like, I need that for my wizardly spells. And he like laughs really awkwardly and like shuffles out of there. And James turns to Kate. He's like, dude, (sighs) like what life choice did I make to get myself to this position? Like, what did, what did I do wrong? Like, what choices did I make that got me here? And Kate's like, I don't know. Like, this is kind of tough. He's like, yes, why me? Like, why? Why? Like, he just, dude just came up to me with a bunch of sticks and says, I want to fight you, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, he just, like, pulls a piece of hair. Like, what? Huh? Bro? I, 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 I just don't know. I just don't know what to do at this point. And Kate's like, yeah, I, I don't know. But, like, I think eventually he'll just get bored of whatever he's doing and give up. So, anyways, next day, it is uh, lunch. Lunch once again. And James comes in, and he finds Kate. And he's almost like they sit down. And he's almost like, he, he's really stiff. He's, like, not talking that much. And Kate's like, are you good? Like, is everything okay? 
And James is like, dude, it's not you. It's just the emo. I just don't know what that kid's going to do today. Like, I'm not trying to lose any more hair. Like, that That really hurt last night. Like, I was starting to bleed from my scalp where he pulled me. Like, that was ridiculous. And, you know, Kate's like, yeah, that kid's pretty weird. Like, sorry you have to go through with that. And speak of the devil, dude. Because at that point, the emo kid walks in. And at this point, he has a backpack on. And he has a he has a smaller stick and he has he has a stick in his hand a smaller one and a like a like a spirit halloween wizard hat on <laughs> and, and james is like you gotta be kidding me bro like he was you gotta be kidding me and at this point kate's like what she turns around and she's like oh my god and the email kid walks up and she's and he's like Ha ha ha, like, this is where you made your mistake, James. This is where you made your last mistake. And he walks out, and he sits next, and he, like, stands up next to them. He reaches into his backpack or whatever. He takes out a piece of chalk. He takes out, the like, a, a, a plastic bag that has a hair in it, presumably, um, what's it, uh, James's hair. And he also has, like, a candle set and a lighter. And he sits down on their t- he like sits down next to them and th- so they had concrete floors in the uh, in the in the lunchroom so next to them he draws like a pentagram puts a bunch of like candles around uh, like the pentagram takes James's hair puts it in the middle lights all the candles at this point th- like this is taking like 2 minutes to do Kate and James are just sitting there looking at him completely aghast like what is like just like what is this kid what is this kid on? Like, whatever he's on, dude, like, maybe get me some of that. Oh, my God. No, but they were just like, w- 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 I mean, what are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to say? So eventually the emo kid has his whole, uh, I don't know, his magic setup is all done or whatever you want to call it. And he lights, starts lighting all the candles. He's like, James, this is your last chance. Give me your girlfriend and I won't put a spell on you. And James is like, dude, what do you mean give me my girlfriend? Like, it's a, it, it's like a mutual choice to be like girlfriend and boyfriend. Like <laughs> you're, you're acting as if this is like the, the, the 1600s or something. And like, when, and like the, the wife is the property, of the husband, bro, like, what are you talking about? And you know, he's like one more chance, bro. I'm about to put a crazy spell on you. If you don't give me your girlfriend and Kate, this is when Kate speaks up and is like, dude, like, even if he said that he was going to give me to you, I'm not going to be, like, I'm not going to be your boyfriend. Like, I'm not going to be your girlfriend, dude. And the emo kid's like, well, I'm going to put a spell on you too, dude, if you don't become my... <laughs> he literally threatens Kate. It is, And he's like, oh, if you don't become my girlfriend, I'm going to put a spell on you as well, which... Okay, um, I might not be the smoothest individual. I might not be, I don't know, the one that has the greatest pickup lines of all time. My Tinder one's pretty funny. I did steal it from my friend, but maybe I'll... I'll, I'll 5,000 likes and I'll reveal it because um, it's, it's pretty funny, but it's also a little embarrassing. But here's one thing I do now. There's a very decent chance that if you threaten to cast a spell on a woman if she doesn't become your girlfriend, she's probably, probably, not 100%, but probably not gonna become your girlfriend i know i might be going out on a crazy limb right now and I, you guys might completely disagree and maybe you found your wife of 10 years who loves you very much from threatening her with magical spells i just don't think that's a great way to do it so eventually the emo kid finishes up and then he lights the hair in the middle and then he takes his magic wand waves it around and just starts saying a bunch of nonsense and at this point, half the, like, the, the entire cafeteria has turned, is just, like, looking. They've almost, like, circled around it like it was a school fight or something. They've circled around it, and they're just like, what the frick, bro? Like, oh, my God. Like, what's going on right now? And eventually, the emo kid, like, points his magic wand at, um, at James and is like, ooga booga, or I, I don't know. He's just saying some nonsense. And, uh, like, literally 15 seconds of pure silence happened. And then... Very clearly, nothing happens. And he's like, I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm going I'm gonna, to I'm gonna count to three. If you don't, you're going to explode because of my spells. And James is like, I think I'm going to take the risk. He's like, three? I'm going to give you one more chance, bro. Like, I'm going to give you one more chance. And James is like, nope. I'm going to take the risk here. Two? And he's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good, man. Like, you can go ahead with this. If I explode, I explode. Like, that's tough. One? 
Last chance, dude. I'm being super generous right now. Just give me your girlfriend and we'll be all good here. And James is like, nah, I'm, I'm chilling, bro. He's like, fine. Kicks in. The, the emo kid literally kicks over his magic, like, whatever set. Because I think he knew it wasn't going to work anyways. Which, thankfully, it was concrete floors and nothing, like, flammable. Because, like, the candles fly all over the place or whatever. And he storms out of there. He, like, storms out of there. At this point, <laughs> James sits back down. He's like, you know, maybe we should go on dates at night when we're not in school. And Kate's like, you know, that's not a bad idea. So the next day, Kate and James actually don't sit together at lunch. Um, they sit separately. Um, but uh, yeah, so they, they, just, they decide that if they're going to like do anything, at least for a little bit to do it outside of school, like after school or at lunch or something like that. But the emo kid once again comes up to James and James is like, oh my God. Oh my god, dude, like, what? What now? And the emo kid, like, he literally goes on one knee and, like, kind of, like, presents, he's, like, he's down on one knee, puts his head down and says, like, I concede, I concede the battle, you win. Like, I just, like, I tried everything possible, but you are the better duelist, like, I honorably concede. And in James's head, he's like, bro, he didn't say this, but he's like, bro, you did not honorably concede. You did the least honorable, con like, <laughs> you did not concede honorably. But at this point, James sees this as a perfect opportunity for the emo kid to just stop. So he's like, all right, man, like, it was a good battle. It was really close, and you'll get them next time. Like, honestly, James is trying to be as chill as possible so that the emo kid doesn't come back and be like, well, actually, I'm going to try more magic or something. And the emo kid stands up, and he, like, kind of, like, nods his head. And James nods his head back, and the emo kid bows and leaves. And yeah, after that point, James and the e and uh, Kate actually were able to like do like lunch dates or whatever in school again. Uh, the relationship lasted like six months. It didn't last crazy long, but Kate and James are still cool to this day. And uh, yeah, the emo kid never. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it.